Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Spar and Brawl. I hope you're having a decent day. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Sam, and we're back with another episode of The Progressive World. So as always, please like and subscribe, and timestamps are down below. So Sam, let's go over some of our favorite stories for, for this episode. I think both of us really look forward to talking about that panel that took place on, you know, with the Democratic Democrat progressives running for for Congress. I I'm a speechless. Yeah, <laughs> you know I think we're yeah. Not that many people watched it as well, and even the Vanguard guys I was really? listening to them. They're like, yeah, we watched some of it. We skipped. I looked at the number of views. There's tw- there are twelve thousand on Katie Halper. I don't know how many on um her channel, Mar- uh, Maria channel. I. I am going through insomniac period, so I was <laughs> up and I had nothing else. To do. I was making pancakes and watching this. So <laughs> that was me. <laughs> but even just, I've just watched doing it. the whisking the butter and the milk and all that. So yeah, yeah, just in front of you. <laughs> but even I've watched seventy five percent of it and parts of it twice because at the end I wow. ended up kind of liking it even. <laughs> I think yes. I watched it so much, I started liking it, but we can talk about that. Yeah, you just <laughs> told me that before the, before this. Is, I, I am interested to... Anyways, anyway, yeah, let's do yeah. it for that. But yeah, then, the panel. Then Brianna on Bad Fate tried to get one more conversation out of the whole Whoopi Goldberg <laughs> situation. <laughs> I think topic. We're going to try as well, but, you know, I think it had lost some of esteem and there wasn't... I don't have much to say anymore. And I felt like they didn't have perhaps too much to say anymore, but I, yeah, we'll, we'll but talk I about it. It was like, still good. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't know a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, okay. U- Ukraine, Russia is getting more interesting in a lot of ways, including the media coverage. So I'm definitely looking forward oh to talking God, about yeah. that. And the Iran nuclear deal. I mean, we've been covering this story for how long, Sam? And I think finally <laughs> something well, we, might be happening. I've been I've been following personally on a you know personal basis for the last decade or so. So has the most Iranian people. But yeah, but, but I would say that's yeah, it's it's. I mean, I have interesting take. I don't know. We'll talk about it. But it does seem like we're getting somewhere, which is quite odd. Yeah. And then finally, we're going to do a little kind of film review, but of course, one that's relevant to the channel more rest on The King's Man. So wh- why was it that you wanted to do this, Sam? Do you want to just? Yeah, sure. I watched The King's Man, which is the which is a prequel to The King's Man movies with Colin Firth and stuff. And it's from I like this director a lot, actually. And it was the weirdest movie I had seen in a while. It is one of the most British movies I've seen. But it was it had the weirdest politics and weirdest relationship to history, I would say. Yeah, so, so it takes place in World War One, and there's like, there are the Russians, there are the British. Yeah, yeah, Rasputin there the, is there. Yeah. Did you, well, I, mean, I mean, It was all Rasputin. It. He's the only Russian. <laughs> well, no, no, you get on. the... There is the czar and there is... Uh, I don't know yeah. if you, you didn't get to Lenin, did you? No. All right. So, yeah, that's... I mean, I wish you got to the... The, the relationship between this movie and Lenin is the weird... Anyways, anyways, okay. I'll get into We'll it. get into it. All right. So, um, let's start our little chit-chat for today with this comment that Pickle the Pirate, one of our regular viewers and commenters, left and... I personally like talking about this uh, this topic, so I thought it was a good idea. So he wrote, on the subject of Iran, I had read in the past that there was significant prejudice against Afghan immigrants. Cur- curious to hear any perspective on that. So I was thinking I would answer this question with literally my own like personal perspective from when I lived in Iran, and then Sam can also share his and perhaps and undermine everything I've said or fill in some of the holes. Let's see. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I lived in, uh, I lived in Tehran, pretty much as the only city I've seen with some uh, rural areas, let's say, in in Iran. The north. Yeah, the north, as they call it, uh, which is kind of like, yeah, going to like a summer place 
in the context that uh, I've done it. But and so I lived in Iran once for like six years between the age of 30. We yeah, have pretty much for six or seven years, let's say, right? Between the age of like eight to 14. That's the main time. Then I've been back a few times. So based on that time, what I saw in, in Af- it would have people of Afghani descent live in Iran. Prejudice in the sense that I rarely heard like kind of the political stuff that you hear about immigrants perhaps being said on on TV by politicians and other in the US. Maybe that had more to do with my age. But I mean, I just saw that they were that. So people didn't talk about them in that way, but they were all limited to construction jobs, really construction jobs or working in people's houses. So then from there, you can just imagine what kind of um, relation they had but and besides that, I mean, you know, um, Afghani people, immigrants who live in Iran, I think a lot of them probably don't have any kind of documentation, right, Sam? But they just, of course, live um, wherever yeah, they kind I, of want yeah. in in Iran. And based on what I, I had, a lot of people, of course, lived where they worked. And yeah, I think so. I don't know. What would you say, Sam? No, what would you say in terms of did you ever see them face any prejudice? I mean, you know, they, they were, I would say that the places that they worked and all this, and like if, if when they interacted with a um, with an Iranian, given that there was such a big difference in the kind of work that they were doing and their status and all this, they were, uh, they were perhaps talked down to in a way that in such a relationship they will be. That's for sure that happened. But my only point that I'm trying to make here, I guess that would be different is that I never like, heard you know like people saying oh afghani people are like this or they come and do that you know i never heard that but of course there was an insane power dynamic <laughs> between them and most members of probably iranian society and a lot of them so they were the way they spoke to each other was of course um you know you could say like talk down to or in that sense sure no yeah fair enough yeah i don't know what you think I mean, look, I oh, or what you know, even <laughs> like, yeah, and how, that's, and how that's are they talked better... about? One thing I don't know really is how are they talked about, and exactly like at a society yeah, level, you... politician, media, news, are they like blamed for that's, taking people's is... jobs? These kind of things. There is a bit of a mix for the Iranian up, like the middle class, the cultural producers, whatever you want to call them. You have to. It is super polite. Like the level of, like, even as you know, like the Iranian, I would say the most prejudiced Iranians have is always reserved for the Arab population, mm. usually, especially non-Iranian Arabs. And even Agree then, with man, you there. I mean, there you hear exactly. That's, I'm actually glad you said that, because, for instance, mm. exactly, Iranians will make jokes about Arabs or say, like, you know, they have prejudice Which, to, more towards Arabs, perhaps even Indians or even Pakistanis than they would about um, Afghani people. Like, I've never heard of an Afghan joke, but I guess in Iran, that would be a really messed up thing if you're making Afghan jokes, whereas or, Arabs or, or others are not in the same or, situation. By the way, like, I mean, I, that's the thing that, I mean, even like, it's so stupid, like Iranians are so bad at racism that their anti-Semitic <laughs> jokes is all about how Arabs have a large penis. <laughs> and it's like, how is that it? How is that a bad thing? <laughs> like that's not a bad thing. But okay, but let's yeah, not get uh, back into the Semitic uh, thing, by the no, way, because no, I saw but, how you threw that in there. No, no, but I was gonna say, like the I mean, like you uh, the biggest group in Iran where there is a joke, like the, it's a joke group type of thing, it, are the Azeris, and they're like 50% mm. of the population, like the Turkish people. But Afghanistanis. The thing but they're different, Afghan- by the way. The Azeris are Iranians, though, So for people who are not uh, Azar- aware. Yeah, Azeris are Iranian Turks. Largely, but living not- in Iran. These ones you're talking about are living in Iran. Living they have in Iran. Yeah, Iranian I'm, passport. Yeah. They're Iranian. Yeah. yeah, yeah so it doesn't yeah, yeah. become Turkic is speaking. Yeah. Turkic is speaking. Yeah. Uh, although they're not all Azeri. Like, in Iran, you have Turks from all over. Majority are Azeri. But that's just... Anyway, but my point is that Afghanistanis are not made fun of in that sense, yeah. in a way, in the, like, they're not, they're no just like a joke in this, like, there is a joke industry around, yeah. you know, Turks But I mean, and, that's, yeah. but it, ex- but that's the difference, right? Azeris yeah, are yeah. Iranians who have, who live in all kinds of 
social no, classes Afga- no, and no, no, background, no, wait, wait. but Afghanis wait, are Afga- Afghani no, no, I- immigrants without documents who offer, who often no, go back but- and forth and are kind of no, there man, to but, work but, but, and send money back based on what-, what I've seen. No, but Afghanistanis are not seen, I think. That's what peace, like, it's a bit making it worse, the exploitation of, because that's the thing. Afghanistani people are exploited heavily in Iran as basically below minimum wage labor. Of course, yeah. They work harder, they uh, they do. I mean, it's just, like, ha, most of Tehran is built by Afghani people. Like, Tehrani people, Iranian people, like, I mean, Iranian people are do not work, per well, se. They don't really yeah. enjoy the, you know, the fruits of their labor or labor so to speak well when i was when i was in iran all construction work construction and i'm not talking about like painters like of, uh, painters i saw a lot yeah, they yeah, were heavy iranian but heavy, heavy construction they were all um afghani immigrants refugees and yeah but yeah but let me do okay so get me now. so that's the economic situation they have to get th- their documentation uh re uh, re, uh, oh, they have every... some kind of documentation. Yeah, yeah, they have uh, some. Most of them have documentation. They have to get the documentation reauthorized every six months or once a year, if I'm not mistaken. They have to pay for that. Mm-hmm. That's really unfair. But like, yeah. uh, what I was gonna, it's just like the legal system is not very much in their benefit. But That's police sure. is not police is not very tough. Like it's very much tolerated and it's not enforced and. You, you know, you see them on most of the construction sites, as you said, and stuff. And probably a lot of them are their I mean, documents is out yeah. of date or something. There's but no, nobody goes after them. So, yeah. I mean, there's no benefit for the police to typically go after these. Sometimes they do. Groups. Sometimes they do. Uh, like they go to busy bazaar areas mm-hmm. and they look. But then the problem, the thing with the Afghanistani people is that, first of all, Afghanistani people look this exact same thing as Iranian people. Like there is no like you can't tell by the looks you can tell by the dress code, yeah you know that but, but the looks is the exact same thing the language is the exact same thing between it like if you go for well, I mean, some somebody from rural Khorasan, which is the north yeah sure uh, okay okay but Iran, that's they don't sound any different like Afghanistan okay 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 100 percent. but in tehran for instance you can ease the, the accent is totally different than people who live in tehran in tehran it's from very Tehran. easy to tell no, yeah yeah but, in Tehran, yeah, but you go you, you you can't tell if they're from like a rural area or if they're afghanistani you can't i don't me. know i think i think based i think you could based on yeah. dress code you can but based on a lot of yeah i mean okay there are certain tribes within the Af- like okay there are more people of like with asian features in afghanistan than there are in, in iran but if you're from eastern iran there's a very good chance you have asian feature like it's just it's very yeah, common yeah, yeah. you know it's it's mostly what you can tell is the accent is the persian if they speak persian and it's accented and it takes a while but so but i would say like there's always documentaries like since i was a kid there was all these movies that won the all the awards in iran all mm. the festival and it's all about like if have you ever seen Roma, the um, Mexican ye- black and white film? Oh no, <laughs> I was it's, thinking of a, a Woody Allen movie. No. <laughs> oh no, 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 <laughs> no. It's, it's all that. It's kind of like, in my view, a bit of a like Afghanistani movies are always about this Afghanistan young person who comes to Iran and gets exploited by yeah. a capitalist asshole. And so it's a very mixed Iranian society has a very mixed like the Iranian government is very polite by the way the supreme leader of iran two years ago gave a gave a uh, gave a sort of a royal co- command that mm. all afghanistani children in iran even yeah. undocumented must be enrolled in schools yeah, because like the, the racism in iran happens at the provincial level. like that's where you see genuine racism against afghanistani people like in uh, in uh, outskirts of towns, for example, you hear every couple of years there was like a rape and mm. then people as a mob attacked some Afghanistani person who was working somewhere without any evidence or sort of like that. It's not so much a status sponsored and the urban middle class are actually very much like lovey-dovey and want to pretend that they're, you know, I, I would describe yeah. the, the situation of Afghanistani people in Iran similar to Irish in Britain back in the days. Because back, they back back in the day, I mean, not that back in like thirty years ago. 
like really to that travel. extent but like eh, were they were they to that extent like limited to only one or two sectors pretty much and yeah, was it like that no i i irish people back in the days yeah in uk yeah they tended to be for like they come to uk to work for labor you know type of jobs mm -hmm. and but i would say there are rich afghanistanis in iran as well working and you know business especially after the american invasion mm -hmm. you know there was uh, rich afghanistani business people and shit uh, but you know uh, it's mostly yeah, their laborers and it's it's so weird it's kind of again like the irish like the you know like you know who could you compare like, it to in the u.s is it even compare Catholics before the Catholic emancipation. I don't know when it was. No, no, no. I was thinking of the current years. context. If there was any group of immigrants that you could compare it to, but I'm not too sure. Not really, yeah. because linguistically, this is again. It's similar. You know, it's so weird. Then you exploit people who use like they have the same language and basically the same culture. Mm -hmm. In a way, it feels worse because. <laughs> You're like, oh my God, Europeans, you know, they don't do that to themselves or whatever. You know, we are doing this to us. Like, you know, you're, yeah, I guess. Iranians are exploiting, like, you know, Iranian speakers are exploiting. That's a Whoopi at, Goldberg comment there. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But at the same time, it's Middle it's Eastern, all, Middle Eastern crime. Yeah, yeah, Middle Eastern. It's Iranian on Iranian crime. But at the same time, you're like, uh, well, it's better than exploiting, like, better than going and stealing some other people from africa i don't it's a way it's a very bad situation and they are exploited yeah but yeah i mean i don't think one. it's i don't think that's a comparable one yeah that's for sure yeah uh, yeah it's a very very weird one and uh, the worst thing i hate is that yeah it's the uh, you know you hear from normal people sometimes you know that they steal our jobs or Afghanistan. The worst yeah, part so is you the hear rich that, people. So you hear that some from people. So, yeah, they, they steal our jobs less so, but more they are dirty and they need, oh, you yeah. know, they, they are always unclean and oh, ha, 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 their accents. <laughs> but then again, the same people who do that to Afghanistan, people would do that in a heart, like they wouldn't bat an eye doing the same to a rural Iranian, you know, like, yeah. oh, look at that guy, he's so dirty. I mean, dirty. in Iran, it's very... Okay, how about this? Or, um, anything else on the Afghanistan one? Because no, it no, just no. gave me an idea. In no, Iran, no. and maybe they do it in other contexts and people too, but like in Tehran at least, it was very common for people to say like, oh, this person is from a village. So they use the word um, Dahati. And that's like a completely acceptable My... derogatory thing to say <laughs> about I'm, I'm anyone you. who you don't, who is different I, I from think, you in one bit like the person can be exactly i've even heard it like no weird. no the hati has a, a specific no no the hati is i must say it's a very it's derogatory <laughs> I, I i would say but it is it does it does <laughs> capture something though it in my view <laughs> yeah. the is one of my favorites because it's one of my favorite insults because it i think it, it's the equivalent in, in english is provincial like with a provincial mindset you know, look at this. Uh, like, you wouldn't you know say I mean? like someone's clothes are provincial, whereas someone could wear this oh, and yeah, someone would be yeah, like, yeah. oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, yeah, you would easily say that. I'm telling no, people the that... truth about Iranian culture here and <laughs> countering no, no, right. whitewashing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my, my propaganda. No, everything is good in Iran. <laughs> it's no racism or prejudice. No, I, I, I mean, the, uh, I must say, I, I do have a bit of a arrogance regarding urban is urban versus <laughs> rural people and i would say yeah I, I think that's the key to iranian actually that's i was thinking that i was listening to matt christman talking about right now america and trump and you know democrats and urban versus rural and i think iran because of its geography has that's always been the most intense sort of dividing line the rural versus the urban you know and i think I that's think yeah i agree that's with that biggest. a lot that's very interesting like because Iran is a country so, that you have to realize it's been always, always dominated by cities mm -hmm. because of the way geography was based. And what, you know, does this so, does this term Dahati does it get used in most provinces? <clears throat> does it even get used in like rural areas or like does everybody say it or just oh, in in you no know, no in yeah in rural like not in rural areas but mm -hmm. in other major cities mm -hmm. yeah they do like that's a, yeah they, I, like because you have. 
Like you have parts of Iran when there is one city, mm-hmm. three villages, and nothing else for like hundred <laughs> miles. <laughs> you know, so it's it does like there is a tension there. I I would. I mean, it's a very weird one. Uh, but uh, I remember when I was a kid, saying the hati was much more common. Mm, okay, and so they as, say, people say less now. Yeah, nowadays, especially with Tehran becoming much more like all the you know increased uh, urbanization people coming to live in it and stuff I, I because i'm a i i have a very dirty i mean i think anybody who's sh- seen the show i have a mouth <laughs> like a sailor and i i because uh, i uh, yeah because of our weird upbringings i have i am i swear in a very old-fashioned way in iranian so dahati is very old-fashioned in a way so it's kind of like somebody going around at a young age going oh poppycock oh what's the, this is hogwash yeah. man that's it's so funny what you're saying yeah. you're pretty much saying like back in the day you used to speak like this this is old school and iran has become more woke and politically correct now. Iran is, that was like iran the is, english iran translation is, of what you just said I mean, Iran you, has, you I mean, no, no, you're right. But a lot of people think Iran is this like Islamic country. So it's not woke. Iran, the Iranian revolution was the original woke revolution. The, I, in Iran, women are not presented as these like, I mean, they are presented to an extent as these, you know, figures that, but they, they've been very much at the forefront of the revolution. Mm. And like the whole hijab idea, it's a woke idea. It's about the fact yeah. that you have to, yeah, yeah, you have to protect women because women are more vulnerable in a society. Or we have is like that in, Iran, we have, in a way, it is. I, I, it comes from a work like they have. It's kind of like women only carriages. They in like Jeremy Corbyn or some leftists were talking about that in UK that maybe it's a good idea to have women only metro carriages. I mean, I don't know if night. that would be considered walk but i guess if it's yeah anyway no it comes from that mindset it doesn't come from let's put women down it mm. comes from actually like trying to it, enable i'm not saying it's yeah. right or wrong whatever but uh you know I, it's just it's a very vo- like i told you there was like I, we've seen anti-semitism against arabs in iran it's just very common <laughs> wait right? that's a confusing thing i know that you understand in that way and you sent me a link no, to everybody... explain semitism but we've already done this before <laughs> me and our viewers and most people in north america don't understand semitism I mean... in in the way that you say it and that link that you sent to me which <laughs> includes both jewish people and arabs it is but the semiotic <laughs> language what like was it, the link that is, you sent me was it a wiki leak or no no it was uh the it was a jewish uh, it was arab jewish it was an arab lady i don't know on a on a show it was a Korean oh, yeah. show sit down with it was really funny guys sit down with i forget yeah, anyway so it's not open yeah that kind of form <laughs> But, but like on Iranian TV one time, like five years ago, one Iranian comedian said the mildest thing. Like he didn't, yeah, he wasn't you said a, you know, anti-Arab or anything. He said that like the tone was disrespectful to Arabs. And the Iranian, like urban class and middle class, man, they fucking lost. But he did it on TV. That's very unique. So maybe that had a lot oh, that's to what do I'm with saying. it. No, with but the reaction and saying. the backlash as well. Well, because you know, on Iranian TV, I mean, you know, it's like it's like a state TV in like the most like can you... structured, like polite, no, no, organized no, no, no. way. What, really. may, no, yeah, what I had seen, I guess, times. maybe, yeah. No, man. Nowadays, especially with the streamings and all that, it's all just. Oh it's no, all, the streaming. Yeah. Which streamings are you referring to, though? Like there is equivalent of Netflix. There is oh, equivalent, but it's and they do Iran, and it's program. Iran based. Uh, original programming they do all, all kind and they there are all, i mean even before that there was this home box office or whatever mm. uh, industry where they would sell you tv shows on dvds instead of on tv and already things had started to I break see. down like you know the state structure of the control of media yes but i sorry, would say can you... my views are a bit outdated they're from the late 90s early 2000s <laughs> <laughs> 1982, <laughs> the state television. <laughs> Camera, we have uh, we have televisions. Continue. We've moved beyond radio now. <laughs> I don't know if you believe this, but, uh, but I would say, can you believe though, if somebody like if he, somebody on American television or even to a lesser extent, but British television mm-hmm. said something along those lines about Mexicans or Irish, 
nobody would bat an eye. Yeah. He said something like like that Arab guy. That was mm. the, that was as far as yeah. the badness went. And people just like what the fuck? Yeah. They're ha- like there are ten million Iranian Arabs. You asshole! Why would you say <laughs> like? <laughs> yeah, so that's I, what I mean. Also, weird, with yeah. Afghan refugees, I mean, you would never hear on TV exactly like no, people no being like they're way, they're yeah. taking our our jobs no or stuff way, like no that. Way. Yeah. You w- would never have like a radio talk show guy that you mm, have in America well put, that yeah. would be uh, like, oh, you. So- the only time you get somebody going that crazy is the Iranian parliament. Mm. You have some people who are uh, war veterans and they clearly are suffering from post-traumatic <laughs> stress, especially mm. like there's, by the way, it's really funny. Azeri people in Iran, in Iran, uh, I'm Azeri, like the but, <laughs> like the most, the joke industry in Iran is very Azeri focused. Mm. But then Azeris themselves are tend to be the, that region of Iran is the most racist region. Like, and once in a while, one of the members of the parliament from that region in the parliament loses it and just starts going at Arabs or at <laughs> Afghanistani people or at some, like sometimes British. It's just, it could be so random. You like suddenly there is like, he sees something and he's reminded of something from the war and he just, oh mother. But what did Afghanis have with the war? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know. He, just, he suddenly loses it and just, yeah. So it's, that's the rare occasion we get the official racist thing it's but it's not that it's not existent but the iranian government is very much it's kind of like russia they don't like racism is not part of the deal you can't yeah. be racist you know interesting what do you mean like russia a bit do you want to elaborate on that quickly well uh, he folk like in the same way that uh, you know uh, putin especially recently focuses on the multinational yeah like he won't be the like empire he d- oh yeah you mean like he won't yeah like talk crap based on what you've seen of like dagestanis or like different parts not of only, russia not talk crap there will be parades just like in iran there will be parades of different people of different tribes of cultures coming mm. doing their shit every other day there's a like there's these if you listen to iranian state radio mm. it's all about these multilingual songs that all say iran is fantastic in iranian <laughs> and then Azeri and then some local language and all that but uh, yeah but uh, i would say like i the, the thing is afghanistani people just like a lot of people face prejudice in iran the point i want to make that in iran if you're not from the cities you're fucked in a way and they make like fun of you and mm. it's a very urban, like urban people are, yeah, as you said, that Gahati word. It's mm. very much more of a dividing I mean, mark than Afghanistani or Azeri or whatever. I mean, there are what, 80 million Iranians, 70 something, and 80. like 13 million live in Tehran, which is, or like greater Tehran. So you get one out of seven, pretty much, you can tell it's in this big city. And then you add up the other big cities. So what, and, like uh, probably yeah. like 70%. <laughs> How big is the second city? Yeah, actually. The second, know? the second biggest city, guess what is the second biggest city? Shiraz, Masha, this one. No, Shiraz is really a town. Okay. Shiraz is tiny. Shiraz but, is tiny. There you uh, go, my Sh- ignorance. Yeah, and no, no, it's, 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 it's historically important. No, I w- I, most people would think Tabriz, Mashhad, or Esfahan. Mm. Like these are industrial yeah. base, like these are powerful cities, but no, Karaj. Oh, okay, Aj- but. Karat so, is adjunct to Tehran. It's yeah, like a, so, it's a city outgrowth of Tehran in many ways. It's like out on outskirts, and it's got about three million population. It's the second most populated city in Iran now. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking on on Wikipedia. They put it. They put them at fourth, though. But I think this Karaj? all depends on how much of it you put on Tehran. And not their their counting is weird, yeah, because they put only eight point six for Iran, and this is twenty sixteen. So you're probably um, right, you know, in the way I, that I I had heard from. No, this is just one Wikipedia well, right. page. No, I think it makes sense. It all depends probably what they're counting as exactly the city and the greater part. But that is insane, even if they were just the fourth one. Because yeah, 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 you're it, right, Karaj. Karaj, what was just a village outside of Tehran. And it it's turned a ha- into it, if it, there was no traffic, it would be half an hour drive from the northmost yeah. part of Tehran, which is basically on the uh, on a four thousand uh, yeah. kilometer high mountain, to this sort of a 
mountainside, yeah. half an hour drive from, you know, it's not. A, yeah, yeah, I think that's a great example. So, I mean, yeah. So what and now like, now it's Karaj has it. So like now, uh, I mean, this wasn't the case when we were a kid, Tehran and Karaj, the provinces separated, mm-hmm. you know, there's two different. It used to be the same state, mm-hmm. but now there are these different states. It became too big of a, you know, thing to manage. Uh, but, but, but yeah, but Iran is, I think, more than 70% now live in urban areas, urban areas. Percentage of Iran, according to the human, uh, the urban population of Iran was, wow, 65% in 2000, rising to 76% in 2019, and is expected Jesus. to rise to 85% by 2050. So this is from nature.com. Oh, I actually think this is from a scientific article. Yeah, that That's popped good. up on Google. And look, even uh, to be fair, though, I mean, I don't want to be too negative on urbanization necessarily because even villages in Iran are like you have to because of the geography of Iran, you rarely have the type of village that house is attached to a farm. That mm-hmm. rarely happens. You have a the collection house of houses. To... Oh, okay. Yeah. In the south, you have that. Mm-hmm. You have that, but it's it's the rare rare type. Most uh, even villages you go to, there is bunch of houses, and then the farmlands are far away and people go to their farm blacks like mm-hmm. in the north yeah it's it's even there even in a village there is an urban you know what i mean it's they, there is not that ruler sense of separation mm-hmm. that maybe was more common in europe because it, land was just more flat you yeah. know here land is far more concentrated mm-hmm. and uh, limited so i see i see Okay, really good stuff. Anything else uh, mentioning about your chit about chit chat? I mean, we're gonna no, talk about was... a movie later on anyway. Um, yeah, no, so that I... was interesting. No, that was great. Oh, oh I was gonna say I, it was interesting. We got I got such a positive feedback mm. on the Rand Paul. I feel like people like it when I have a nervous <laughs> breakdown. I, I I'll try to miss my uh, pills from now on. So I'll have no. I'll try to have a ner- nervous breakdown on every episode. Just. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's so funny. And someone wrote that you could tell from Cam's face his conservative like nature or something. And <laughs> yeah. I was like taken up. I was like, whoa, I hadn't even watched this video. Why is this guy so worked up and crazy over this? But <laughs> if I had actually seen the video, that like it's it's the fact that his comments were so crazy and your reaction to it were just like a perfect meat and balance I, yeah I, I look i must say i'm not a big fan of myself when i lose it and i'm i am trying to control myself so it was not great for my mental health people going yeah well done. but yeah i guess but i mean his comments so fr- man i mean you it was know. so frustrating because i guess i was so used i was kind of expecting to hear the standard yeah. no i don't want the money go to the terrorists because terrorists don't which he mentioned that people but before and after he said messed up things he like put that in like a messed up sandwich that was like in the middle of you know yeah and he, messed up comments. he says we shouldn't give the people to them we uh, give people to afghanistan and sort of puts them as a monolith mm-hmm. and then you know again you could have just said the standard i don't think the money would go to the afghanistani people it goes to the terrorists yeah you and know, I'm, we're looking for alternative ways of getting that yeah even. yeah the and most then, bs yeah exactly yeah, standard we're working BS. with the un or humanitarian organizations yeah yeah exactly but and we should just, become yeah, spokespeople so for, <laughs> for yeah, Paul. we'll be like buddy just stick to the fucking talking point. not just goddamn Rand Paul. Mm-hmm. we're gonna get into it with our name i really do think there is a really need to be improvement in uh, political consultants and writers mm. but let's yeah, yeah maybe we should get into the first yeah. story now. My, my last comment was just that you know Rand Paul I feel like he can say whatever he wants whether you agree with it or not he's Does a he, senator is he, man yeah could he get kicked out would he be able to be challenged no where he's really. from he's, where is I mean, he from he's even, I don't know, you know? but he's he, I, he's like an inheritor of his dad's seat uh, the <laughs> great the great Ron Paul yeah. uh, who, who was by the way what a, like yeah, he's an intru- like I would have been mm. interested to like it must be crazy to live with him like <laughs> man so principled like no like I remember his last past, campaign when was yeah, that 20 uh, 12 no 16 16 Iran. even no I don't know actually I I remember no 16 he ran against no, Trump I, yeah I remember SNL Trump? I remember SNL did funny uh, sketches he ran very early on I think I remember SNL did great a sketch where they 
because they hate uh, they hate uh, Ron Paul, so they don't want to give him air time in debate. Yeah. So they kidnap him and take him to a, like a, in a van. They take him <laughs> and they take him to a place to kill him. And then they just show the CCTV camera and there is bullets shot. And then Ron Paul comes out of the van. He kills all the kidnappers. <laughs> just, he's this indestructible. I mean, yeah, yeah no, Rand I know. Paul is I feel safe. like Rand Paul is really yeah. safe. Yeah. I feel like they're just part of, you know, Senate or Congress. They're just there, you know, they're like, there's like everybody else. And then there's these two who are like, you know, they were just there and they're just different. Which two? Besides well, him Trump and Trump. before his dad. So like oh, both yeah. of them, they just look like they're not from the same process as everybody else. It's like if you go to a party, a there's always a group doctor. of friends and like this one person who gets invited always. <laughs> <laughs> And it's why, just the, why is, yeah why is he wearing a tuxedo it's not that yeah, what's going on yeah but i mean he's useful i mean he does you know compared to the other lunatics out yeah, there he, so sometimes he's, he's one of them he's the second i would say he's the second most anti-war senator yeah. out, probably at that's outside of bernie so at the very least but, but yeah. yeah you're right let's get this party started and talk about all these progressive candidates all these progressive candidates all right sam let's talk about this panel that took place this <laughs> progressive draft pick or something however you want to call it I'm joking. We'll get in. We'll get, i couldn't help myself we'll get into that so here's the description that I just took from Katie Halper's <laughs> <laughs> page that says best was going on. Join Marianne Williamson, Katie Halper, Ju- Juliana Forlano, Brianna Crystal on Wednesday for a live stream to support non-corporate backed candidates for Congress. So it's pretty much a non-stop row one after the other of candidates, people who are running for Congress and they're non-corporate backed. And I guess they were all progressive. There wasn't like a libertarian one or a conservative. That's what they told us. <laughs> <'Cause>, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you said that. So let's get right into it because some did talk about policy, okay? I mean, there were so many people that anything that we say right now that you can go find someone who did because there were like, how many? How many? There was like I don't know. 15, 20? I, it was so funny, man. It was, as you said, it was just, it was like a sports. I, I don't even follow a sports, but I've seen those things that America, I think it's NBA and American football All of where them they do get yeah. picked by the, by uh, like, it's so weird. By the way, that whole thing is on itself no, weird, but, but it, it's so, it was like, yeah, now it was, I mean, no, I have a couple of bits more, I'm going to go through. But it's even more like a press conference where players have been bought and purchased and they're being introduced because okay these people had already as if been picked but they they were they were being introduced but both of them work but yeah the reason we said we think they're progressive is that i mean they didn't get too much into policy but at the same time there were so many of them and they're all from these different areas and i guess we all assume that we like their policies so is that a justification that they very heavily leaned on different aspects of what i believe you call um identity identity politics politics, yeah yeah no first of all just a very synopsis of what i personally thought was that it was the like genuinely all the things that the right wing or sometimes the centrists say about the left was exemplify all the worst things Mm. about like oh they are only focused on identity politics or they don't talk substantively they focus on personal stories or they they just care about a diversity of you know people not uh, ideas all of it was very much evident and these are by the way i hope people understand this is coming from a really i mean i'm a huge fan of at least two of the people on the panel i think they do probably the best uh Jour- I don't know about journalistic media work, whatever you want to call it, on uh, online or offline out there. So I am a so these people are some like I I just want and to I appreciate what they try to do. Thing. But yeah, continue and yeah, I'll that, say that, that after. That was the most. First of all, I would uh, yeah. Sorry to cut it you was, off. It it was a bit for me watching from left to like on my screen, not on the actual mm. panel, but left to right was sort of was my feeling from bad. <laughs> too good it was like 
the new lady. You're so I right because Brie and Katie were sitting next to each other. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and Katie was like, Katie was a bit more like, all right. And that put pissed me off uh, the worst. The, in the beginning of the inter uh, in the panel, and I I put a reminder for that goddamn panel because I knew I was not gonna sleep that. <laughs> so you know, I I was uh, in the beginning of the panel. Marion Williamson is like, yeah, you know, we're gonna introduce these candidates, but also. We have Brie here. Brie was like the, you know, Brie was the muscle of the, you know, was muscle of the guy. Brie here and Brie, Brie is not happy, guys. Brie is no. not happy with. What's really, been going did she on. say that you're Brie, lying? No, not, not exactly. I'm exaggerating. <laughs> but yeah, Brie's, not, Brie's gonna bring the tough questions. You know, a lot of people are not happy with you, Democrats, and this got me. And, and Brie was like, mm, yeah. Fuck you up, man! I'll fuck you. Like, it was like I don't know. Brie was third party I, sign or something. Third party. Yeah, like, you know, with a baseball bat with a chain over it. Brie going, well, yeah, what's up, man? What what you want? What? Yeah, I expected that, and I was so excited. I was like, yeah, man. Yeah. Brie and Katie Halper, I know they're great. So, Mary, Mary, Mary Williams yeah. seems like the nicest lady who has ever lived, like or something. I don't know about the other lady. I, I'll get into her <laughs> as a later point. But yeah, uh, but it was. I was so excited. And then what happened? They brought any everybody on, and then Brie didn't ask any tough questions. There was no tough. I no. Mean, and actually, the tough ma- question, I guess, the tough question that Marianne would be referring to is really the fact that Brie would say more like third party. Why go to the why, democratic why, yeah, machine? Why blah blah blah. And I mean, yeah. And I, I think I mean, that gets is, to the, to that's, the fair, that's the more substantial criticism that's been made by people. If you go watch it, if you look at the comments and uh, if you go on the Vanguard and stuff, that is people's thing. They're like, yo, what happened to the third party kind of, you know, discussions, debate angles? There was no way like that. And then if you think about was, it, though. so it was, pre- huh? There were, no, there I were, would, every I, single I, one of no, them no, were I, democratic. No, no. No, but no? I, to be fair, yeah, no, no, they were every single one were democratic. But to be fair to the interviewers, at least, at least in one point, I'm sure Marianne Williamson with Nina Turner and Brie and Katie, at least once each of them, I'm pretty sure with a the candidate, they ask why people should not go to a third party and why should they they trust okay. Democrats again? Why should they trust you a, a like a specific? I, okay, I'm so I pretty sure that. about Nina. I'm pretty sure with Nina Turner, Marion Williamson asked her that. The answers, the answers were awful. The answers were like, you know, I'm going to bring the voice to the voiceless. I'm going to bring the same fire that I brought to the uh, to the local council. To the That's not a goddamn answer, yeah. all right? This giving us a promise of like, I'm going to be the voice because, you, I mean, I'll, I'll, let's all I'll save my comments on Canada. Yeah, but that no. was my, that was the biggest part of the disappointment. This building up of free as this like top. <laughs> Of, uh, uh, you know, questionnaire there, like on the side in the darkness. Like, guys, if you don't, you know, cooperate, you we will fuck you up. You know? <laughs> and then nothing. And then mm. two hours of just everybody just uh, loving each other. And oh, aren't you? No. You, you are a mother, and you're a teacher, and you're a, okay. a yeah. black person. And I. And then I'm gonna my second point. Uh, no, we'll have fun with the identity thing. politics. Leave that aside for a split second if you can. The identity politics, bit? yeah. Okay, then I'm done. Oh, <laughs> I was I was gonna okay. go on there. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll get into that. So, I mean, you know, I watched it twice. Oh yeah, and I skipped the Nina Turner one because now I'm more interested in hearing the other ones. At least I didn't know Me them. Too. Wanted to hear a bit, so I didn't even hear that. But I think I ended up enjoying it because there were a few of these people that we li- that I like in a different setting and like this panel sitting next to each other, not on video brings that different dynamics a little bit. So I ended up enjoying it a bit and appreciating it. And now that I think about it, that's pretty much what the rising do. So maybe they, sh- they should not, not do this again, but this time it really was just as if, you know, we're showcasing these democratic candidates. We're just presenting them, which fine you can do, but Maybe if they tweak around with this show a bit and, you know, actually have Brie more critical, bring other not just one candidate after another i think it'll be it'll be fun and i guess it'll become the rising so i mean i, I <laughs> personally kind of just different casts yeah, yeah. No, more in. i yeah i enjoy very much katie halper and brianna Greyjoy. marion williamson is just i mean this i've said this but she's the type of person who are who's too nice for me mm-hmm. i can't tolerate <laughs> that more like that i was almost dying that night like people who are that sweet and that 
about love and dove and all that shit. Yeah, I can't. I mean, nice. I just I feel physically repelled <laughs> by that. Time. And I understand that's my problem. I it took me many years of psychiatric help, but I do realize that's. My I feel problem. like if you were her neighbor, just like Bree is, she would try to find your girlfriend and help you out. Because uh, Bree said that she's always talking about you know relationship <laughs> issues and stuff with her. So <laughs> she could also hook you up. With you know, I'm sorry, but you don't need to discuss what we discuss privately now. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, God. you're saying she's a sweet person and stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah she, no, she seems like the kind of person who'd be like, <laughs> she's the type of person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She would be the type of person who brings you like the neighbor that says hi to you, yeah. like the nicer, like, do you need help if you're sick? Yeah. But I can't, I cannot watch. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, I don't know why. What is wrong with me? I had something probably terrible happen <laughs> at my childhood, but uh, uh, and then okay, I want to talk about the other girl now. What okay, hold the on. fuck was that? Like, who was she first of oh. all? Where did she come from? And then, what is from this? Act I TV? Hate... <laughs> it was like it was like a fucking. Uh, it was. I felt like a deja vu. It was going back to 1990s radio Man. show shock. Like now we have. Sherbin Azami and Sherbin Azami, he's Iranian and he's a young man. He's 22 years old. He's coming out now. Sherbin, can you tell us why environment is a good idea? Go, Sherbin. What Sam, are you Sam, are you I told you like this that? yesterday. You have to go see on ACT TV. She literally wow. has this show, just as you said. That is the exact, it, it's exactly like you said. It's as if it's from back in the day. Yeah, and she yeah, interviews people. It's exactly that. So, you have to go see it. it so it was very that is her background. Uh, yeah. Like no, now we are going to see what's fantastic about this young man. Oh, you're fantastic, aren't you? Oh, thank you. It was what is going. It's I mean, talking of a softball interview, that wasn't even softball. That was just yeah. like I don't know, netball. I don't know what it's meant. Yeah, no. I I agree with you there. And you know, you said something in the beginning that was interesting, and we can even go to that and identity politics. Think. <laughs> which is that yeah a lot of the criticisms that the right make they were all exemplified in that panel i guess like so many typical things on the left i mean it was it, it, and by the way offensive. i mean if that was just like a right wing thing if that was like the right wing version you'd be watching you're like jesus christ these people conform so much they all shared like the same they all agree whatever they're so like just nice to whatever no, their even... own thing is and they don't think about it critically and they just lean on their background and I don't mind that though. and that kind of stuff oh no that I mind that. no I don't mind the idea that they didn't like you don't have to always try to build a broad church or excuse me you don't but have they to were always... building a broad church there no they were trying yeah. I think well I not really it wasn't they were all agreeing on most policies and shit oh okay that's not definition of broad church that's true that's just like, yeah no like that's just <laughs> yeah. breaking point that's just a church that's a tiny small church local local parish that's what it is. yeah but uh no my, my, what was sorry i mean i'm not always for building a broad church but the idea that this was anything but a, a sort of a it was a very, as I said, it was like very sports TV interviews. Like they mm. wanna, they never are antagonistic to anyone. Yeah, no, like, no, you're spot on. It, it, it was just like it was just it was like a cheerleading session. It felt 100%. like a rally session, and it was disappointing. And it, I mean, I was kind of, I was gonna get to my point about identity yeah, politics please, that please, I found please. very offensive, frankly. Um, please, please. Then I might I'm counter it a little bit with one or two things, actually. But yeah, please. All right. Guys, I mean, I don't know if anybody has noticed, mm -hmm. but we come from Islamic backgrounds. I don't know if, by the way, Kamir, from now on, whenever you introduce me, Sam from Islamic backgrounds and Iranian backgrounds, I'd like you to point that out. This was, I'm sorry, but this was extremely offensive. I don't know about women. I don't know about the black people, but as a somebody from an Islamic background, I found it extremely, he, like they introduced that Libyan guy. Yeah, this is uh, Johnny Walker's, the Libyan guy. And he's from Libyan background and Islamic background. Now, tell us how your Libyan background is relative to, uh, to your actual policy position yeah uh, what the fuck is that supposed to mean like does that mean like because anybody comes from an Islamic background and by the way Islamic background Libya Iran like one is in North Africa yeah. one is in West Asia like it's I'm sorry East Asia uh, uh, 
East no, West Asia. West Asia. Asia. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't know where my country is. But, yeah. so, you don't know where you are currently. I don't know what is going on. Yeah. So uh, this idea that you have to leave, like, I think that's why it's, by the way, okay, representation is important. Everybody should get a fair chance, but you already have all these people from all these varied backgrounds leaning in so much into this. And then again, Marianne Williamson seems like the nicest lady out there, but she kept ref- like saying, oh, Brie as a black, black woman. Yeah. Oh, Katie as a Jewish lady. Oh, you as a no, white, I mean, uh, like Protestant. Eth- what, okay, what okay, okay. Can you stop on? right there? Because that's perfect for me to kind of come in and play devil's advocate there. So if I could put myself as the panelist, that for sure, if people start talking about my background and stuff, I mean, we'd have to talk back, back and forth. But maybe they don't mind to be identified that way, to, to just be referred all the time to the background. And then the, the politicians who showed up, they probably promote themselves that way. So although we, f- we wouldn't like to be talked about that way, I guess the politicians who were there, they wanted to be referenced about their identity because then they went on and leaned on it even so much more so maybe for them that's that's how they want to be represented and let me just say one or two more things some of it was beyond ridiculous because <laughs> they would say like the mother like pretty much like a father oh, yeah. a husband i'm like geez <laughs> at least skip these ones. <laughs> tell me if they're cat owner dog owner that human that being yeah. raise, yeah. <laughs> the um, human. I, promise, I promise you i'm not a martian yeah no, i can't promise no, i'm like no, okay saw- but Okay, but yeah, this one. and one more thing song? with wait, the idea. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Wait, do you remember that song? I just want do you remember that song? I'm a bitch, I'm a lover, I'm a child, I'm a mother, I'm no. a tractor, I'm a no. do you remember that song? No. I'm a bitch, I'm a lover, I'm a... I was just reminded of that the whole time. It was like I'm a mother, I'm a tractor, I'm a teacher, I'm a oh, fuck off, I don't care. But okay, <laughs> but exactly. So one of them, right? Some of them. Their stories are so, are, there's some people, their stories are so good. What about them? Like, for instance, the, the African-American lady, I believe, from North Carolina, who was like, yeah, my grandpa, he lived until he was, he was 118, bless him. I'm like, yo, come on, are you really talking about your grandpa? But then the next sentence, she's like, and his dad had bought the farmland from his, that he was a slave yeah. on, from his, like, you know, from the slave owner. So then I was thinking, Okay, I mean, if you have that kind of story in your back pocket, <laughs> I guess I can see how you kind of lean on it. But then again, I'm just being extremely, I mean, you know, even that, no, it doesn't mean, but it, so I'm just yeah, trying to it, justify yeah. the identity politics to an extent. Although on a personal level, I 100% agree with uh, what you're saying. And of course, they leaned on it too much, like no policy discussion. And parts of it were absolutely ridiculous, like, father mother and and you're right they kept on doing it to brianna also i think right like i mean they kept on she was like to brianna she was like you know as a black woman or whatever right i mean because i was skipping at times i feel i don't know guys but like i was always taught that even if you do like have these type of things that oh he's a black guy or he's an asian dude or whatever you don't like in a public like in a party or whatever you don't go to people and say, oh, you're black. What do you think as a black person? That's very rude. No, or, I mean, oh, that's for sure. Islamic background. So you must be an expert on Islamic background people. What is your, that is but so in the news rude. world, we do, they do that though. Uh, it's a fucking rude. It's, yeah. I find it, but they, but I would say you, you said you pointed out a good thing and that's why I think I uh-huh. wouldn't trust any of these candidates. No, <laughs> I like three, the, the math teacher who, whose favorite number was number two oh. i loved her it was uh, she was so prepared for that question she was like my favorite number is two because it's the you know it's the first prime number and it's also the you know the uh, leading even though i don't know what but kind of question was, she, was that why did that come up uh, katie asked it and I, i'm glad oh, okay she, that makes sense yeah that <laughs> That's makes funny sense. Yeah. there was uh, there was another lady who was saying that yeah i don't know like you should judge me by my actions and she was very concrete I liked her. The first guy they brought, the guy with the beard, I think Brianna, he had some, like he talked about, we, our team did that, our team did that. But uh, most of these candidates, 
are not trust, do not trust them. They are not trustworthy at all. I, two things. One, the fact that they leaned into their identity politics. I mean, there was, by the way, did you, remember, did you see the Persian dude? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, this I'm show glad, for, I mean, I'm glad the Persian project of taking over <laughs> LA is finally paying off. I mean, it's going, we are going public with our takeover of LA. LA is ours now, guys. Sam, the identity <laughs> politics part was, I mean, you know, maybe in my head it just became this much. It actually wasn't this much, but it was the most I had ever seen. And I'm wondering, it was, it was just it was like, if it, it just compounded like each other, like the style of the show, the questions, all of this just made it more and more and more about identity politics. I wonder if maybe some of these candidates wouldn't talk even this much identity politics other places, because everything seemed to lead on it. You know, they would introduce them through their identity. The most, the first or second, they would, they would ask them two questions, right? And one or two of one of them was pretty much all about their identity. And, and, and we couldn't get the into policies because of the of style the of the show. And they're from different areas. Of course, yeah. they're all across country. And half of the questions were like introducing their identity <laughs> as an African-American, half Jewish uh, single mother. What do you think on this? Like, what, what is that? Why do you have to give a whole fucking like a identity CV before you ask yeah. me a question about yeah. my opinion about it. By the way, does that mean like like the Libyan American guy is better suited on America? Like it, I find that type of thing so problematic when they focus. And then that radio show host lady kept saying, oh my God, what a fantastic <laughs> roster of the people. I just want to have them all. I want to have them all right now. And you're like, what? Yeah. Why? It was so I wouldn't trust any and a lot of them because they lean. I mean, the Persian guy, I, I'm gonna make fun of him because it's fair game, I feel. <laughs> but yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, suddenly he went to this, yeah, as a son of an immigrant in Italy first and now in America. And by the way, I am so I need to look into him because most of Iranians who fled religious prosecutions are super rich type, like they weren't, you know. I mean, I like Iranian immigrants that came out of Iran are like Korean immigrants uh, that came out of like 1950s, 60s to America. They, I, for the longest time, Iranians were the richest per capita minority in America because just they were mm -hmm. the rich people. Were. So I was a bit like that type of leaning in is, in my view, you shouldn't trust any of the anybody who leans into. They, they talked about you know growing up. I would see my father work very hard on the farm. And I would think to myself, why father, why? You the sweat on your brows. And then it made me want to work for my coming. All of this is all Aaron Sorkin, early 1990s Hollywood <laughs> TV movie writing, right? I've heard this before. This is all bullshit. I don't trust any of you. I don't trust anybody who talks about politics like that. And I, not necessarily because, by the way, they are even lying, because they're the type of naive idiot who go into the office with some dreams and then they are fucking pummeled to nothing by people like Nancy Pelosi because they, oh, well, I can't do anything. I try to build consensus, but oh, oh, oh. oh fuck off. And yeah, I just yeah. hate <clears throat> anybody, in my view, anybody who leans into uh, identity politics and talks about politics in terms of personal experiences and seeing my sister what carrying water across the desert no, yeah. i wondered why don't we have trains for the no desert? it was oh, identity off. politics on on steroids and you're right it makes people less trustworthy even although you know some did seem more trustworthy one of them had been a three-time member of senate for her own state not uh, not that, i think that's know, still in washington like, yeah so I she think. had some experience other ones didn't also have an experience but yeah the identity politics thing is just it was insane and i blame some of it honestly on the setup of the of the show even because the time it, frame no, time no just like, because not only did the politicians talk about identity politics but they also the panel and the, all the questions were about identity politics so that's why i'm saying it even yeah it should have been um, it the identity been, they, politics they all should have been one asked one question 
okay, how should we believe, like trust that you would follow up with your promises through the election, considering that there is no live like a lot of other examples. Mm-hmm. And they would like, and how would you do, how would you get yeah. your policies done? Would you go the radical route yeah. or would you try to do coalition building? It's not that difficult. And I was, mm-hmm. I'm going to add, by the way, the thing that I think undermined all the other candidates, at least for me, was the presence of Nina Turner. Mm. Presence of Nina Turner for me just uh, okay. Fuck that. They are all liars. I, I, I that was my immediate. I mean, why reaction. are you again so harsh towards Nina Turner? And just because somebody yeah. who or somebody who not even elected during a Senate, 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 so a state level, not federal level, a Senate election, uh, she uh, starts already uh, uh, making her uh, vocabulary and her language rhetoric milder to appeal to certain people. Uh, I think you like if like they are that easy, and again Nina Turner kind of like AOC. I never liked AOC the same way. They talk too much about identity in my view. They talk too much about the stuff that yeah. makes them in my. But somebody who already in a campaign, not elected, has started to compromise. I mean, come on. I'm, I'm do supposed think, to trust her. Do you think? And I don't understand. Do you think identity politics is good for votes, though? No. Not at all. Uh, Do you think with none of those voters, like any kind of the voters? That's no. Um, and I mean, and I, they're all running in the politics? same state. I think America, so, yeah. if you go nationalistic identity politics, it always yeah, I was works gonna with, say, every ethni- with every yeah. ethnicity. But when you go very specific, I think especially, for example, with maybe the black experience in America is very unique. But for example, Latinos groups that are sort of not not cl- in clear boundaries of yeah. white and black race type thing yeah, they they you know they increasingly are voting republican yeah. or you know that type of thing. so no i don't really th- i think use yeah. the uh, types of identity politics works but not the thing they yeah. are doing and i like i just want to point out uh, another thing what the fuck with the Nina interview? Marianne Williamson started with, oh, we know what you've been going through. And we know after that election that you went through hell. It was mm-hmm. great. What, what, what did she go through exactly? TYT. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> that's no, that's that how, no, I, no, after she lost, she joined TYT. No, I know, but when she was talking about the election campaign. She lost. Yeah. It was so unfair. The way they treated you, what they ran advertisement against there. Have you lived in the goddamn mm. world? Have you ever lived outside of your fucking comfort? Oh, Nina, Nina, oh my God, you're suffered. And Nina was like, Yeah, I know, but I decided to get back up and fight. You're doing the easiest job in the world. Well, I don't know. My job is probably easiest talking yeah, shit. Yeah, that's for but sure. Yeah, that's, yeah, fair enough. But that's mm-hmm. like talking shit in hope of <laughs> getting something done, right? So, and then, yeah, and yeah, guys, support Nina. She went through it. I mean, you're, do you not see yourself in the grand scheme of things? Do you not see how privileged you are? Like, what did she go through? Like, couple of attacks on TV against her. Oh, I'm so, yeah, I mean, oh compared, like, it wasn't, it was during that time, like, she hasn't been through, you know, like, a national level smear, like, Joe Rogan or something like that, and even that exactly, I mean, you know, yeah, during the campaign, they fought back against her, and I know, they ran, no, no. yeah, exactly. And what do, by the way, do when people go into politics, what do you expect? You expect a debate of ideas and policies? This is goddamn fucking politics. Yeah. You want to debate ideas, go to a university. Fuck off. Like, uh, it's, uh, I yeah. don't get these people. Like, uh, and they treat each other with such kit gloves, like, you know, kit, would you, oh, Nina, Nina was, yeah. you know, suffered. I mean, so I guess much that's Marianne's style, though. I guess it just also all came from there because, you know, we're going to talk, huh? But it was her. Mm-hmm. No, it was her thing. Yeah, it was because yeah, you know yeah. we're gonna talk about Brianna in the next story, and you know she's talking with two of her friends there, pretty much, and she tells both of them kind of, "I don't agree with this. You're what are you even talking about? This is not what we're." I'm generalizing. I just mean that's not Brianna's style. I, I agree. Yeah, I think yeah, it all yeah. compounded to make this weird show, which I think I still. I, I, but I like I said, I appreciate mm-hmm. the effort to do something different, and you know they tried this, and they should just. Maybe try again, but definitely a different format and different angles and different questions and Just, different yeah, different questions people yeah. um and yeah, change it. But you know, the like I mentioned, and then let's wrap this up because I mentioned 10 times. But yeah, that argument that you know, where was it where were the third party candidates? And this was just all Democrats and all changing from inside. I don't know if they thought of 
that before that they made the show i guess they had done because i mean that, that is a big conversation no but that's, that's a big conversation nowadays no okay yeah but i feel like all the people there had at least three of them that I know are always going on about third parties. I felt this was yeah, like a, but, I felt this was an event for democratic. Democratic, yeah. I, yeah, I, 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 I mean, it was yeah. advertised as such, so I wasn't. That yeah, was not a surprise criticism. Like you know what I mean? It wasn't like the brief thing that they promise you tough questions <laughs> and then nothing. It yeah, was, I guess I to an example, but even so, just thinking that exactly yeah, yeah, just I know going on mean. a democratic yeah. thing, even yeah, even if that's what they agreed from the get-go, which you're right, they promoted it that way. So they must have thought of that. But it wasn't, I want, wasn't yeah, I the best idea. That maybe that would have brought about no, you know what more. I do think would have helped. Brianna at one point mentions one of the candidates had a conversation with her outside of her show, telling mm. her how hard it is to run as a third party candidate and she says that and says i know a lot of people are curious about that and it's good to talk about that and then they just move on they don't talk about it. like tell us please yeah, somebody tell us about this why is yeah. it difficult to run as a third party candidate so yeah that was that would have been nice i just want to point out something by the way you said because you put you said that and that's true i have a bit of i get triggered whenever i see nina turner and this stuff uh, but I, my question would like you ask me why do you like don't like her as a candidate, by the way, as a person, I'm sure yeah, she's a course. lovely human being. Uh, as a candidate, they're like, why don't you like it? Why do they like her so much? I don't understand that. What has she done? What is uh, her great? Like, you talk about Nina Turner as if she's a spent, as if she's like Jeremy Corbyn, basically. She's been 32 years in the parliament, grinding through. Mm. She's been a low Or Bernie. Fan. Yeah, yeah, or Bernie, yeah, like 70 years of like, oh, like I was next to Martin Luther King <laughs> and, you know, Gandhi. Yeah. I mean, listen, her Mother politics, Teresa. her politics, <laughs> I, I, I would assume it comes from here. Her politics are, um, How are you do know, know leftist because of, some because of what, what she says. Yeah. And oh. for some reason, people think that she's going <laughs> to she, she's the best hope for a progressive candidate, I guess, to get in Senate and become president, I believe. There is just this kind of belief, it seems, behind her by some people. I, don't, I think that's I'm, where it comes from. They yeah, think she's I, the one. I don't know. But yeah, I, mean, you're right. I know Why? she was a state senator yeah. at some point, but for, I really don't yeah. understand mm-hmm. what was the what is her great, what is this thing that we kept? Nina, Nina, save us. Oh, I don't, I, I'm sorry, but I don't see the... And again, you're saying the track record isn't there to back up yeah, yeah, such yeah, exactly. enthusiasm I, for her. I mean, I'm not an expert yeah, exactly. on her biography. Maybe we're missing uh, some me, stuff, I, I but... looked at her, some of her stuff. I really don't know what has she done at the state council thing, uh, but uh, state senate. Thing. I don't know. And uh, by the way, I, I mean, these candidates, I mean, the first guy, maybe, but unless you are willing to call the people on the squad corrupt, like AOC like not all of them, Ilhan Omar, I feel is far better candidate. But unless you're willing to say, oh, is corrupt, at least during your campaign, then you get to the goddamn Congress, then you sell out. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. At least during the campaign, take a goddamn radical position. <laughs> then yeah. you are even campaigning like Nina Turner and most of these people. You are still this wishy-washy and trying to go in the middle yeah. ground. And let's see what yeah. happens this time. She's she's decided to run again very quickly right after that. So let's see. I think she's gonna get crushed probably though because I think the the it's Chantel a, Brown she's she's a yeah, goddamn she should have animal. She's taken man. a minute. Yeah, I'm not too sure. But what what the hell do I? No, know? and, and yeah. she's trying to outflank her from the left mm-hmm. and the right. She's that Chantel which is Brown, so easy. Know, yeah. Which is so easy because so when easy, you're campaigning, so you can say whatever the the hell yeah, you we want. Knew Gavin Newsom supported Medicare for All in California, and now he's saying he's not going to sign. Yeah. I don't understand. Like Medicare Wait. for All is always the biggest conversation during campaigns, but like you know, I, people opposing it, not opposing it, supporting it, but it's actually the furthest thing almost. Like once I mean, they're in the, a lot of things that they talk about. So when you're campaigning, you can say whatever the hell you want. So yeah, she can outflank um, Nina Turner easily from left, right, up, down. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, uh, up, down, yeah. no, that's the thing. And uh, I, it's just so disappointing that on the radical left or whatever they're called, I don't know, 
I, I don't know if I'm a leftist anymore. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going through an existential thing right now. Uh, but on the radical left, on, when they are talking to, I think the view on Katie Halper video was 10,000. They are talking to 10,000 people that are well, already yeah. pretty much aligned with all of your views. And you are still afraid to go radical. Mm -hmm. You are still afraid to say anything about like, no, we have, you know what I mean? Uh, like, listen, pathetic. you're it's making some, pathetic. you make some good points sometimes. I must I must give it to you. you have, this is difficult, but I have to admit. <laughs> no, no, I totally agree. And on a rare occasion, Sam could be correct. <laughs> and no, honestly, and I try to be as fair and play devil's advocate as much as possible for this. And I would say that I think they shouldn't give this up, but definitely play around with it. And then maybe we'll get to get more views. Not that it's going to you no, know, add up to anything. Uh, it could become a better thing. This was just, yeah. Just like our show, it needed some work. <laughs> yeah, and it still does. Uh, we'll no, ever, I, uh, we'll always. Yeah, yeah, I want, uh, yeah, I, I Any final thoughts, it, though, Sam? We should keep this party I, rolling. I just think, yeah, they a slightly better questions, less sort of a uh, goody feely auntie house Christmas time feel for the you know gathering you know less of a talk show oh now look at this fantastic pick for our draft this is a this is a this is a politician coming from the league two of la He's man i know where you got that voice from i just realized you got it from space jam i think when they introduced oh, the players right. for the basketball game that's the exact I don't watch the sport, so that's <laughs> That's the only place I do. From the original Space Jam. The original second one Space I couldn't Jam. Yeah. Watch the second one. It's not no, as I, bad as people say. It's funny. I it's watched fun. 15 minutes, but I'm also not five anymore. So there's also I, know, there's I, know. Less I, of that. I, I am. I am inside <laughs> still five. And I, I must say though, even I am five, but LeBron James is probably the worst actor that has ever like Michael Jordan was bad, but LeBron James is yeah, a whole Jordan's different a, level of bad. Yeah. It's just like he can't act to save his life it's like it's so bad it's so bad but yeah <laughs> but yeah no you summarized it nicely i think at the end so yeah and again as everybody knows we are a huge fan of at least two and somewhat fan of at least one <laughs> and i don't know about the radio lady mm -hmm. but whatever but yeah so it's coming from a good place all right sam let's keep this very lively and fun party <laughs> moving Boy. forward and yeah so bad faith brianna had a, another video on whoopi goldberg and in it she spoke with batia as everybody's quite become familiar with her by now and of course thomas chatterton williams so the okay of course the video and discussion were about race and whoopi goldberg but sam i think well, i was just asking you what was Bree's main point what would let's say what each of them what were they arguing how about we start that way maybe that's a good way and of course, we only got to watch again half of it because we're not subscribed. Yeah. Or we're not. And, uh, and but we need cheap. to. Yeah, we need to. We have uh, useful oh, yeah. idiots. And we have, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Matt Taibbi. Aaron Matthew? Sorry, Matt Taibbi. Oh, Matt Taibbi. But yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. What, what, what were each of them? What were they trying to argue? Start with whoever you want, whoever you know best their arguments. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm asking you because I couldn't do it. <laughs> no, I mean, look, first of all, it did seem like the 30 minutes we saw Thomas Chatterton was just there to justify the other two's conversation. He was, yeah, I want to. Yeah, he didn't I'm speak much. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, race is not real. Race is <laughs> not real. <laughs> no. <laughs> God, and but first of all i i mean there were a couple of things first of all i mean I, I, again as we discuss i first of all great interview great discussion even though i don't agree with uh, I think I don't agree with some of the things they said. I don't know. But uh, great discussion because it's yeah. sort of, you can see people's, if, like, that's what we want. Like, that's why, like, why can't you talk to politicians like that? Mm. Uh, anyways, but um, yeah. It, Good point. First of all, I like to make the point. I feel like Brie is just wasting way too much time and brain effort on trying to analyze what Whoopi was really getting into. Yeah, a couple of times she, couple of time her and Batu, Batil, Batu. I mean, her name is Batia. Batia, but... Batia sorry, yeah. Batia. They are a couple of times they're like, I think that's what Whoopi was referring to, and that part was correct. And uh, again, as you 
proof to me with the video about Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Joe Biden. Uh, Booby is an idiot. Booby is an old person who's just has some fucking ideas and just blaps it out. This is not somebody who's trying to make a very, yeah, you know, yeah. very clear point about, I, I see that Jewish identity <laughs> exists as a ethnicity, but we must differentiate between people whose biological um, features. Uh, fuck off. Like, that's not what Whoopi was. Whoopi was just saying some idiotic thing that just, oh, it's about people treating people badly. Yeah. It's not about yeah. race. She just wanted to say something. Yeah. This idea that trying to read the future in, in tea leaves of Whoopi Goldberg's comments. I mean, no, that's insults. a good first point because Brianna replayed the clip and stuff. And yeah, there's nothing to and really she's like, try I, to I think understand. Whoopi is trying to get here. Whoopi is not <laughs> trying to get to anything. Whoopi is an idiot who doesn't know about. I mean, not an idiot. She's yeah. a fantastic actress. But when it comes to history of race, clearly she As, doesn't yeah. know much, right? So she shouldn't comment. That's <laughs> all. Yeah. So that's, and then everybody's so nice to Whoopi, as to, even Thomas yeah, Jefferson. I mean, Actually, there we go. So Batia actually half the stuff that perhaps she was saying was just saying, yeah, you know, I'm not mad at Whoopi. We get it. Um, it's not so bad. And also African-Americans have had it the worst. It's totally different. In America, Jews in right now have it. Um, Jewish people have it like, you know, the best ever in history. But and then she said actually one thing that Brianna was like, wait, um, what are you saying? Because she was like, you know, African Americans are like really the only ones who've had it really bad and really uniquely bad. And Brianna was like, what about me. what about uh, Native Americans? I thought that was a good one that was kind of forgotten. But yeah, but Tia's point was kind of just that, and that um, of course um, she was completely wrong uh, in her you know whatever yeah, analysis or point of view. But yeah, yeah. that's all that she was saying. And yeah, Thomas Chatterton was just saying again race is not real so, it's a social construct and here i'll be maybe a bit critical of thomas chatton which is that is of course 100 percent true right but it doesn't really help with this conversation or the fact that in in real in society it people don't understand no, look, it that look. way so i think that's why he didn't really have much to say because his main point and argument is always like don't move more towards, you know, breaking down race Racial. and this kind of that. Let's move completely away from it, which is a good point. I'm with him, but I just feel like perhaps that was why he didn't have much to contribute to this conversation. No, it was feel, mainly Batia. I feel like that's I, my problem with the interview was Batia and Brianna kept talking about race as if it's a real I mean, but they kept saying it's a social construct, but they kept referring. But people like, understand sorry, it but- that way. Do they not, Sam? Like, if you on the streets, <laughs> if you go on the streets <laughs> and become the, one on of those street, reporters, Sam. yeah, and you go ask around, like, you know, what do you think of? I mean, I race know, plays a big part. Just look at that previous no, no, segment wait, wait. that we just wa- uh, talked Let's, about the panel. Okay, but we are not on the race. streets, though. Brianna's bad faith podcast is not being brought. I mean, unless you're delusional that you think you're doing this sort of a prime time thing that is going to change the nation's view, you're not. You're doing an intellectual bullshit work that, not. I mean, look, I mean, I who's mean, talking? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> pot calling the kettle black. You know, it's it's. Uh, you, if you have fifty thousand subscribers, it's not like you're broadcasting to like thirty three hundred million people. So you have to go with the street talk so i don't get that but yeah then, fair enough uh, and and i really didn't like uh, first of all i don't think but really is a really good person to know about like the, her way the way she characterized like she kept talking about jewish people don't see themselves as a race they see themselves as an ethnicity and that's why Jew, like for, again guys all ethnicities are just unless we're talking linguistically like the semiotic languages all ethnicities are, you know, bullshit and prone, by the way. That's why. No, no uh, ethnicity, because ethnicity isn't necessarily bullshit, right? Because it could it be is. cultural, a, okay. language, it's, geographical, it is. That's what all I, of no, these no, no. kind language, of things. Language, I admit, language is a real thing. The rest of it is just Like, what are construct. Iranians? Iranians, exactly. yeah, or like some kind of ethnicity of social, which have to do with speaking Persian, and either you or your parents were born, or no, grandparents Iranian, were born in Iran. That's what, Iranian, right? I, Iranian, I would say, is more 
like again it's like kind of british it's more of a imperial cult as in sure sure let's not get into to... those discussions yeah, but yeah, anyway yeah. my point was no. that ethnicity mo- mo- re- recognizes that it's socially constructed and that it's saying that this whereas race comes from the other side as if it okay it yeah. presents but, itself as if but, it ex- but it's a ethnicity. fact of life I think ethnicity and ethnic, if you go for an ethnic identity, has very is very much prone to becoming a, a nationalistic and mm-hmm. a sort of a racialistic thing, as we saw is the case with Israel. Mm. Israel is a, uh, you know, is a Jewish, uh, it was made first, uh, it was sort of a atheistic Jews, you know, and increasingly became religious and nationalistic and xenophobic, whatever you want to call it. So I don't know if she was very good at explaining the what it, like she kept like referring to this Jewish as if it's this monolith of like all the Jewish. I mean, she did say thing. that there are different ethnicities, ethnicities yes, of she Jews. Did she did say, say that you know they're black and Jews and all that. Yeah. yeah. No, no, but but I wish she it. it I mean, yeah, but with it kind of like uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It felt like it, there was a lot of wishy-washy talk and just you would have thomas Jefferson because i think from, guys race is not yeah because i think but there was nothing I, to talk about maybe and we're making maybe. a story on it how pathetic is that because we're having fun talking about it but exactly yeah, yeah. there wasn't anything to talk about now that i, I think about it a little bit brianna like, was over analyzing like you said but yeah was just there to be like you know yeah we understand where whoopi comes from and thomas had there, his own conversation that we i, that's I very wanted good to and we heard but yeah, the Thomas one, though, I do think he had a, one good point he made, which was the, the idea of white homogeneity, like this idea that the white people are homogeneous, or to be honest, or black people are homogeneous, or as we discussed about the panel, we had this mm-hmm. idea that people of Muslim background are, you know what I mean, like, I think he, his point there was like a good one that you you know what I mean. This yeah. we, you need to get it out of your mind that white people black you need to get it out of your mind that color has anything to do with like your identity mm. or you know specifically color. Like color is really mm. stupid. Like ethnicity, at least you can say it's a social construct, but color is just fucking yeah. yeah it's just no. Stupid. And in his previous talk with Brianna, I mean, in that one where they really got deep into the race thing, where there wasn't like you know the Whoopi Goldberg distraction, he made his points much better and much even clearer than here. Because here yeah, there was I, like here it was about Whoopi Goldberg, but there's just yeah, it there's nothing the- to say anymore about Whoopi Goldberg. But Sam, there are two things I'd like to touch on on this. There were two actually like uh, yeah, two things that commenters picked up on this. One was hilarious, uh, which is when um what's his uh um Achia. no 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 thomas all right thomas what said that you know um african americans right now in the u.s have it the best that any descendants of african of africa oh, have ever yeah. had <laughs> she said that and then brianna was like okay I don't, I don't even agree with that on the face of it that was a bit of a you know is that true and then to that she responded that that is such a what's his name the guy who we did a show on the bbc Steve pinker yeah she was like you're both doing the Steve pinker. pinker thing that was pretty funny and the second one was when batia just threw uh you know just corbin. casually said like you know corbin what, what did he hurt so many like what did she say exactly she said the, the jewish community in the uk yeah. felt afraid felt in fear of corbin yeah uh. wow Nobody should uh, fear Corbyn because unfortunately, by the way, yeah, this is it. This is it. I mean, let's, I mean, first of all, like you could argue that like Jewish community may have feared him rightly or wrongly, but that's a complete smear. There are many Jewish groups, uh, many Jewish MPs came out in support yeah. of uh, Corbyn. This whole anti-Semitic Corbyn thing was largely a media creation. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with the Jewish people of the yeah. UK or the Jewish people of the Labour Party. Uh, not that there was no, I mean, there was anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, and I assume there is, continues to be. But considering the opposition, Tories mm-hmm. were basically a bunch of like racist, anti-Semite, <laughs> like every. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not no, all of them. Yeah. I, I am exactly. And what about Thomas Chatterton's but, comment, but, though, but, about African Americans yeah, right I, now I, having it? I do it hate that. Best. I do hate that. I did hate that. And I agree with Brie. That's a Steven Pinker thing. And I think, <laughs> yeah. in a way. Because uh, I guess like, the I, argument is that 
I mean, in that case, everyone always pretty much has the best has the in best future, because, pretty much, unless something uh, extraordinary think, happens. Yeah, I think you should always. It's it's the way I put it in my head, but you should always do like good life is should be always uh, calculated, inflation adjusted, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah. Because relatively speaking, like you know, relative to the potential life that a black man should have in a fair society, I think uh, relative to that, let's say that's here, majority of uh, yeah people from that community due to material conditions can achieve this much. Yeah, historical right? conditions. But yeah, oh, you're right. This is much higher than 100 years ago where yeah. everybody... But he even said it globally this much. right now, which even Did that... Did he say you know, globally? He, yeah, I'm pretty sure. He's, That's an idiotic sure. thing I'm pretty say. sure. I'm pretty That's sure. That's a very idiotic thing to say. What about, I mean, like whole of Africa where there yeah, are yeah, nations yeah. where black people are leading... The nation exactly so i'm 99.9 percent sure so i'm gonna i'll play the clip after this so or i'll, I'll europe, either be right or wrong far, uk yeah UK, not europe but in the uk there's far less i think racial racialized xenophobia yeah I guess, I was, kind of so way. i think those were kind of two mini scandals that emerged out of the show the jeremy corbyn the... one was so annoying because yeah. i kind of agreed with what she was saying at that part that yeah. you know uh, like because she was explaining brie to be honest sometimes brie I don't know. Like, it was really weird because I felt like they were explaining to her that, okay, race is not real, Brie, but racism is real, okay? That's, you know, because that's referring to a set of actions that's referring to a biological yeah. category that it doesn't exist. So, like, I was agreeing with her, but then she threw Jeremy Corbyn in there. Yeah, and, I know, I know. Uh, but she, yeah. it was so quick. I had to go back, like, 10 times and click on this timestamp that people had included to hear it because it was just, like, among which she just like threw that in there but yeah and that's it i mean yeah so i think brianna maybe she was a bit frustrated like you know where the conversation was going like i don't know what she wanted to perhaps get out of it i'm not too sure i don't understand why she overcomplicates this whole racial thing just it's not real okay move on it's over but it has but it's real on the ground not really no it's real to idiots, just like I, a lot of people. No, but you, of, yeah, but I mean, like, based yeah, on how people of, were classified back in the day or whenever, there's still historical ramifications. You just pointed out to African Americans, so it is real sure, in that sense. Sure, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, but that's like saying, okay, somebody's. It's like religious people; their faith is real. I mean, okay, yeah, I, mean, okay, yeah, I, know. I don't care. You're right. Yeah, we're going I in circles, I guess. Now, like, yeah. no, that's yeah. like, like we've had. Like she's had this. This. Like, yeah. it's just, it feels like what you want. Yeah people to like what do you want us to say like yeah, it was i don't know uh, it was, it, uh, so that's, it was fu- that's why i think this i think this episode's theme should be mixed to bad feelings because <laughs> i all i had like this interview was such a mixed feeling of somebody yeah. by the way batia is somebody who like marion williamson has that aura of niceness that really puts me off <laughs> like i don't know why what's wrong with me why do i hate nice people but yeah yeah but, I, right. I don't know what, Any uh, final words on this story? Uh, yeah, I I think it would be better if we watched the full interview. <laughs> I know, I know, no, we have to subscribe to Brie. Like we yeah, watch I mean, all her sh- stuff and we we love it. So it's we unfair. are poor. So <laughs> well, not subscribe. What is yeah to her Patreon or whatever. But Give yeah, all right. The money, yeah. All right, Sam, let's move on to our, I think it's our third story now. The Jacobin did an interview, the headlines called Rescuing the Left from its Obsession with Culture. It was with Vivek Chiber. It's the first time I've seen him. I haven't um, seen him before, and I believe he has a new book out, Vivek Chiber. And is he also, I'm just trying to look here, is he a professor? It doesn't say if he's a professor. Or did he him say? It's say an a, author. Author. I, I, okay. I downloaded, I just downloaded a a couple of books by him and oh really yeah I'm, I, it's not his new book it's his older yeah. books okay and the, his new book is called the the matrix the what matrix something matrix yeah something like that i just closed the page but yeah so i mean the video as yeah, i said anyway. it was called rescuing the left from its obsession with culture but yeah what were some of the main arguments and points that he was trying to make it was an interesting one first of all jen pan the lady who did the interview i feel like she should join the whole sort of a Marianne gang. I was just thinking whatever. of that. She doesn't yeah. mingle with the others because I think she has a, she just has a specific paid job by Jacobin. So she just does that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. 
yeah. she feels a bit more academic y maybe. I don't know. But anyways, uh, yeah, she's does a great job. Like they bring mm-hmm. inter- they bring really good like authors and all yeah, that. So no, it's for fun. Sure. Uh, but this guy was an interesting one because I kind of agreed with what he said, but I don't know what who was he saying it to in a way, because he was talking about the fact that a lot of people on the left or center left, let's say, are extremely condescending to the working class and they don't speak the language of the working class. And they say that they're uh, like they are fooled by the right wing. They're brainwashed by the right wing. But when if you're working class, somebody is offering you concrete steps, like, for example, uh, reduction in immigration to reduce the size of the labor market so it's in your benefit or something along those lines that like so it's it's not they're making a mistake they're actually making a rational calculating choice but then she said like that, that's why the um, fair enough i kind i agree with him and he said like the left is, I'm, I'm guessing he was talking about the media or you know he, because he talks about the yeah woke left and all that so yeah. he talks about that they should stop you know finger wagging and all that and i agree with all so of liberal that. leftist kind of people maybe he was yeah, talking yeah. to people who are i guess obsessed with cultural identity stuff, and identity. culture yeah, and and like yeah like how how race and you know that type of thing uh but then when he's talking about like when he was saying there was this condescension on a lot of people from the left one of the books he mentions is What's the Matter with Kansas by Thomas Frank, one of the people we mentioned and I'm a big fan of. And I never got the feeling from Thomas Frank's writing. And I've read most of his books, I think. I've read Conquest of Cool. I've read What's the Matter with Kansas. I've read the populist one, the most recent book. Mm. And I never got the feeling that he's saying that the, he's, again, he's exactly... In my view, Thomas Frank is exactly targeting the same group of people he's we, we, yeah. Vivek is talking about. He so really, I don't understand. Yeah. Was he really referring I, to that book? Because he said it so quickly. But yeah, he said like, blah, blah, maybe, blah. Maybe what's the matter maybe, with Kansas? Yeah. Because I was yeah, also baffled really, like you a bit. Yeah, it sort of threw me off because I, okay, we agree with you. But who are you talking to? Like, who yeah. are, who's the exact target? Because he did critique? that of a lot, right? He did seem like, you know... um a bit of Jordan Peters. I'm not trying to say anything like that, but he oh, he tone? did no. He did like have someone that it seemed like he was telling or arguing. He wasn't necessarily the host, so that's why I think you I you're saying you, yeah. who was he, the guy arguing with? Because normally people would assume, okay, I'm the host. I'm guessing, but yeah, it wasn't really with um um with her. Yeah, I guess it was with people who he sees as liberal leftists, perhaps. And then yeah, if he was really referring to Thomas Frank there, that threw me off a bit. Yeah, that, yeah, that was, yeah, that put the whole thing into a bit of a, it was a tailspin, you know. That's why I tell you, don't make unnecessary comments if you don't have to, because it can undermine everything else um, in that you say. But I'm, you know, I haven't written a book yet. <laughs> when I do write a book, yes, I will be. When you do present a written work, yeah. you have to be far more, yeah, like, uh, no, but, I meant... Uh, but that's that yeah. happens all the time, right? You're listening to someone you're liking, you're liking it, and then they suddenly give their opinion on something. You're like, yeah, why? Yeah. That was... <laughs> I, I, I Man, recently, I, I, you know my love for the Chapo Trap House guys uh-huh. and all that? I just recently found this video of them talking about my least favorite movie of all time. Like the Which movie is? I hate, Avatar. I oh. despise that movie so much. And I watched it in a 3D cinema. I, were and we together? Was... Because I also watched it in 3D cinema. Do you think we're possibly together no, no, anyway? No, no, no. No, I was in UK. I, I remember the cinema I watched it in because it was oh. so disappointing. I, I, True, I, I went I with my it. mom and sister, I remember. Because it was one of uh, those movies that, you know, it's like a... You can watch a fa- yeah. No, fan. and it's also like... It's like a monumental movie that you know you have it's to watch. Yeah, yeah, it's an it's event. Yeah, it's event. I I mean I from the first, I mean I've always hated James Cameron. I think he's the most overrated, probably one of the worst directors. I Terminator Two is good, but uh, and one. Uh, I but, just uh, told you not to share your opinion on unnecessary ah. things. <laughs> now we lost all fans. <laughs> and, I, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I just shared my opinion that the most. The highest earning director in the world is shit. Like the most popular anyway, director. Continue. <laughs> <Now then. laughs> yeah, sorry. The Chapel Trap House guys, they defended yeah. Avatar. And yeah, you're right. I should stop talking. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I mean, the movie has like the world's what you once said it, I think like years ago, you were like, it's Pocahontas. Um, it right? is. It's like it's the story Pocah- of Pocahontas. But even yeah. worse than it's like, in this, yeah, case, I mean, it's a, in this yeah. case, the guy literally can become an Indian American. He can transform <laughs> his biology <laughs> into, <laughs> into a, it was and not just Pocahontas dancing with wolves, like all the fucking bullshit the stories of a white man or some, some authority goes somewhere Saving and they, natives almost get, from... they get lost and then natives rescue them yeah. and now they form a bond with the natives yeah oh. i mean and, and james he, he's so much i guess he just leverages technology in like his popularity and stuff because you know there's like he built like what this like one person submarine to go under the ground and yeah, this for one he rolled it out with 3d and stuff so i guess a lot no, of he's this... i mean that's a, that's what comes across in his movies clearly and he's openly said that he's more interested in like engineering and cameras mm. and like creating 3d cam- like i mean they spent i believe 12 years making the first avatar yeah, movie true, or right? something like that yeah. and i genuinely don't believe there was more than half an hour spent on this storytelling like no it, it was, was the like most genuinely- basic story it was I mean- the, yeah corporation bad military bad scientist eh? uh, poor guy soldier good locals noble savages noble savages <laughs> it was Very just well, like that yeah. it was like nothing original but not even yeah but yeah i should have stopped sharing my views no. about the some of the most popular art in the world <laughs> okay going back to vivek chibur i personally don't have much else to say about this mm-hmm. um this video although i sent it to you <laughs> Like, why did yeah, I you were that? like, you, no, what was weird was the message you said, do you have any thoughts on this? And I was, <laughs> I watched it and I was like, do I? <laughs> I was like, what was he? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sam, let's move to our progressive geopolitics segment. So this, I think today we really have just two stories. Ukraine, Russia, which has a few mini stories, a lot of it revolved around media reporting. And then the Iran nuclear deal, which maybe a bit more substance will be um, discussed. But yeah, I mean, you, oh yeah, I thought you were muted for a second. Sorry. Uh, oh no, no, I was just doing my. Uh, I'm trying to talk less through miming, sort of. <laughs> I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I. I but I've yeah, I've been told by too many people I talk too much. It's just so, it's getting really bad. <laughs> Ukraine, Russia. At the time of recording here, which is Friday, I believe the latest is that because on Wednesday, you know, there were like some troops are going. Russia is taking back some troops, all this footage of tanks. Then on Thursday, NATO came out quickly and the U.S. came out quickly that no, actually more Russian troops are being sent. And I believe that's kind of the latest just to put um, that no, 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 no. there or more has happened today. Even. More has today. Yeah, more has. Well, it's really weird. Russia basically said training is over. We're going back home. And then uh americans were like nah we don't know they're like <laughs> we don't know and then americans said that no they're not going back home we have yeah. reports that they're not going back home and uh then uh so weird uh, they're but, going but, to but, another party <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> there are reports there may be another party going on and we are not in back. <laughs> and and then today, uh, I mean, this is the latest that there are apparently accusations of there have been some exchanges of fire. Oh, yes, shedding. true. I saw that. Yeah. And everybody's obviously saying you Russians are saying Ukrainians did it. Ukrainians are saying the Russians but did it. Are they not saying that that's just a battle going on in Ukraine between like separatists who are already there? Oh, so no, it's not necessarily yeah, the Russian military that was involved. No, 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 no. Yeah. no. It's not definitely not the Russian military. No, no. It's, I mean, yeah. If, if Russian military gets involved, it's over. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it's like, it's finished. Oh, man, I, I read done. this, I saw this story and report where paying like, an American and Russian plane, like, flew, like, right past each other and things like that. So, like, you know, accidents can also happen sometimes with these. <laughs> sure, but, <laughs> these, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit, I'm, I'm very, I don't think this is going to become, I mean, at no. most there is going to be accidents. Nobody's going to, yeah. even Russian are not going to be willing to, you know, go to a full scale yeah. war of attrition over Donbass. You know, it's just nobody is that interested in the whole Ukrainian thing is just too much. I think it's a much, much ado about nothing, really. It's media trying to get attention, as always. Uh, and now we get to the media's media, great yeah. coverage of the Ukrainian crisis. But yeah, that, that was the latest update that there. And Blinken and Lavrov are supposed to meet, meet to reduce tensions. 
Uh, so that was interesting. Yeah. And yeah, and another element that's just always interesting for me, but we repeated it, we repeated it before, so then we can move on to the media part, which is, yeah, the role that gas, I feel like, is really playing and how the Germans and the French are just like, we're not saying anything bad <laughs> about the Russians, we don't give, give a shit what you want. And it's just really the UK and US who are like, yeah, so I mean, that just and, seems and to play such goes, a big role in the whole goes, thing as big as a role as the NATO story is playing. I mean, to me, it feels like... And it like goes a, beyond gas, by the way, because especially for Germany as an exports, as exports uh, sort of oriented economy... Oh, to, uh, to Russia. They, they sell to Russia, you mean? They, they, yeah. They, yeah, the economic landscape is not just Russia even. The economic landscape is shifting from America to the Asia, basically, mm-hmm. to the East. I mean, majority of the global population, I don't know if you've seen that map, but about, I think, 70% or 60% of the population of glo- globe is basically on... From the India, area, East. East. Yeah, East Asia, like Southeast Asia, basically. Yeah. The islands, the, I mean, uh, below the yellow uh, river of uh, China yeah. and all that. I mean, so, if you, you know, just it, add China and India and Indonesia, that's already like um, yeah. nearly 3 billion. I don't know. Like I mean, 6, India but... stretches a bit to West Asia mm-hmm. and all that, so whatever. But I'm just saying that, yeah, exactly economy is completely shifting towards Asia. So the Germans, it's not just even about gas. Mm. It's just like they know that American, like it's their future markets is not America. Mm. So. And at the same time, and there's nothing for them to do anyway. Like you guys are, <laughs> you guys are barking. It's not in our interest to, you know, be barking with them. So, I mean, well, what do you want uh, Stephen do? <laughs> Yeah, hey. well, <laughs> Americans want Germans to yeah. sort of spend more on their military and stuff, and they are not willing to do that. So it's or a weird cancel one. that pipeline, I guess. Say no I to that pipeline. I, I don't understand. The thing with that pipeline, where I, th- I think it's rhetoric mostly, is that if Americans really didn't want that pipeline, they could cancel it. Could have, they could have stopped it from being built before. And, uh, and it's just, at this st- it feels weird to let it basically be built and then saying no you were not you know what i mean like it's been built that's Leverage. the hardest part yeah uh, so i don't i know i know but i think at the same time because america is also it's america is not a monolith there are also people who want america to become they see europe i think partially correctly as sort of a burden because mm-hmm. basically America is paying for their security. I mean, those were they Trump's have... arguments, right? Yeah, and he was right. They're paying. No, I mean, that's definitely right. They're paying for their security. And European nations basically don't have any military. They don't have any armies. And then they're like, oh, of course, we, you know, of course you're going to spend your money on a welfare state when yeah. you don't have any, like, you know what I mean? When you don't have to defend yourself. So I think the Americans are so, like, America is not a, like a lot of people in the, high echelons of power kind of want Europe to become like, okay, get your gas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, fuck off. <laughs> so it's yeah. A bit of, uh, yeah it's, ev- everything is in flux. Some right do, but there's also, you know, the US wanting to sell natural gas, um, liquefied natural gas it's as well. All, from I there. just, economics I mean, of that doesn't make sense. Really? They've like become like a huge trans- exporter. I but know, but natural liquefied gas is different. So, I mean, you can do, you do know, it but by po- boats and stuff. But, but, to the UK, Russians, I guess. The Russians have two pipelines. Yeah, yeah, it's no, I know. It's so much easier to, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I but I mean, you know, you use your might you to cook. to impose um, something that's less beneficial, I guess. I mean, you're right. I mean, there was this case that the Hill covered, I think, recently that there was a, there were doctors that tried to go to a different institute to work, but the company sued them and <laughs> said that the business, they like, uh, the government should have stopped them going, from going to a company. So they, uh, for a few hours or, or a day, the judge put an injunction on them. Mm. So they weren't able like, so yeah, I guess maybe they just go full on anti-free market and just all, all the yeah. veneer and facade comes off maybe, but it's just at the economically speaking, it does not have any, like, it doesn't make sense at all. Like, I don't know, I don't I mean, know how the Americans point and just we no, no economic you know, stuff. I mean, like bit. if you're, like it's just there's no way they're going to be able to provide a na- liquid natural liquefied gas to uh, yeah Europe definitely provide enough rate. yeah but i guess they're thinking you know force them to buy 10 20 percent more from us i don't know i'm just it reminds me of sort of saudi arabia and iraq because 
Saudi Arabia always says, why Iraq is buying uh, electricity and energy from Iran? And then they don't offer, you know, <laughs> they, they offer the most expensive, like uh, the Iraq, every Iraqi mini- energy minister is like, they offer the cheapest price. I swear <laughs> to God, I don't have money. What do you want? To do? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how would that work, but yeah. Uh, let's get to the fun part. Let's yeah, get to the media I mean, part. Yeah, the media part. I mean, so there's Brian Stelter part, and there's also um, no, the, the, the filming of the, the protesters. And... Yeah, Ukraine. Let's start yeah. from Ukraine. The, uh, I mean, the old lady, this old nice old lady who is just so, you know, this nice old lady who just wants to defend her home, defend her, what you call it, her soil, her <laughs> blood. <laughs> Her blood and soil. <laughs> Man, that was the funniest thing. I mean, maybe the translation is wrong, <laughs> but she's like, I need to learn how to shoot to be able to protect what is from my home or on the streets. I'm like, damn, this lady is <laughs> <laughs> sniping people from... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, grandma just was <laughs> grandma <does> shit. <laughs> she wakes up at 5 a.m. right away instead of like knitting or something. She's just hanging. <laughs> she's just yeah, she's cleaning her gun. She's got she does the whole like blindfold. You know, have you seen right. that in movies? But, yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah which... <laughs> but listen, I don't know if that was the funniest part or the fact that they had Nazi similar symbols on a bunch of them sitting there as Aaron Matte pointed out he also went blood to Jimmy Dore yeah, short pointed soil. out yeah or way, those protesters <laughs> that had the I... most obnoxious ba- banner ever that had like picture oh. of Gaddafi and a picture of no, Saddam wait. Hussein crossed out and then put in I'm like let's who do I you mean, think this, this argument a, works yes, with this is an important issue let's yeah. go one by one first of all i mean do you think i'm a being a i was being a bit of a dick when because to me Probably, that symbol was when? <laughs> uh, uh, that symbol was ob- like i don't see that like that symbol was obviously no not. you like, mean the reason that you're saying that is because i said that you know i guess these editors they don't know much they just let it slip and you're like how can someone not know it that, was that's so a, yeah it yeah. was like the thunder thingy that yeah. the ss does like anybody who's a slightly like seen like if you've seen a starship yeah. troopers mm-hmm. like you know like which is yeah. about the future nazi government <laughs> it's, it's like uh, i don't know I, I, yeah me, I don't especially know if you on. see it in like the eastern europe context or european context maybe you should be even more suspicious of you yeah, know yeah. <laughs> what is I, the I affiliation mean, again, of this and again, we are, we are talking about like CNN and MSNBC. We are not talking about some a guy who's working at an office. Like you're supposed to be experts. They're like, I don't get it. It was so, to me, that was, but it was so much fun because everybody covered that. Like yeah. even like, I think there was an Iraqi news channel. Yes, guys, can you believe it's CNN? <laughs> like, got, like every country covered it. Everybody made fun of them. And yeah, it, and it was actually a very, inf- I think it was good in a way because a lot of people think exactly like they think all the fascists are young yeah. men who are, you know, sexually frustrated and are just assholes and all, yeah. you know, but no, actually quite like there is uh, fascism is very much equally mm-hmm. accepted among old nice ladies who probably pet cats. <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of, it, it's, but it it's was the two face of, it's the two face of fascism, you know, like. Hitler famously wanted to get pictured with dogs and children mm. <laughs> and all that. You know, there's a lot of sentimentality and oh. sweetness in yeah, fascism. Sure. So I'm glad that, that came out. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Aaron Mathis said it's like NBC literally did like neo Nazi <laughs> promotion. <Yeah. laughs> literally. It, I, it's, I'm not even using literally yeah. wrongly as I usually yeah. do. <laughs> Like, they, did no. pro- they did an advertisement yeah for they did a neo-nazi Nazi propaganda group. yeah Jesus that's crazy Christ. and it was going but I, I, for me the banners was still the stupidest <laughs> the banner was so out of stupid everything. because the banner was like milosevic yeah uh saddam gaddafi like and you're like oh former yugoslavia oh what a great <laughs> land of peace and tranquility yeah. that is Iraq, oh my god, the development, the level, and Libya, of, which seems uh, the to level be of growth, doing literally all of them. Where, in the- where harmony, where <laughs> racial harmony is at its high, at its zenith right yeah. now. 
I mean, like, what the fuck, guys? This was like the best. It was like a poster why we need dictators for stability <laughs> reasons. <laughs> I swear. But like, pro dictator. This is the part, though, that you see how much of it is media based and bullshit and propaganda. Because then I think in the same Katie Halpern, useful idiots thing, they also showed, like, you know, I think they go to Kiev and they interview, like, young, a lot of them were young females, but also some young males. And then, like, you know, are you scared oh, what are so you doing that was so and they're like we don't know our life is normal i feel like i should be scared but <laughs> as you can see I, here you everything is be scared yeah i'm not should i <laughs> yeah. have a gun what's going on no i loved it when uh, they did loads of interviews and everybody's like no no everything is normal why are you trying to no one or two of them were like country? yeah we're thinking of leaving maybe but <laughs> i don't know <laughs> and then no i loved it when the guy was like I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. Only 200 kilometers away from the border, people are having coffee. People the reporter, are living yeah. Their normal life. I, this, <laughs> this is not right. They should all be, I guess, uh, doing the fucking, you know, yeah. Taliban handlebar <laughs> training. I don't know. Or did you see the one they were ha- uh, they were practicing with wooden AK 47s? No, wooden no, clashing no. cops. No. What the fuck? I don't know how that helps. I don't like it. I don't know. The Russian hypersonic bomb is coming in. Get the wood. Get the wooden gun. Get it. Man, listen. It I was mean, so yeah. ridiculous. It was so ridiculous. I mean, I love the media. It's just they when just when you think yeah, they can't get any stupider, they go on and they do advertisement for Nazis. And you're like, ah, oh, you did yeah. it, buddy. You just topped yourself. <laughs> That's the fuck up. And I mean, I guess I'm not surprised that the big fuck up happened with this story because this story is so much of it media based and media created, even more than perhaps other stories that eventually <laughs> you, you know, end up in these kind of places where you, you know, exactly when you show the stupidest things out there. And then, yeah, speaking of stupidity, I don't even remember. Brian Stelter's point on Russia and Ukraine but I just love his show his show is like half about him he's like educating people and it made me kind of think that the reason that he loved his former boss so much is that his former boss created like a show for him and just gave it for him he's like fine you're you go and tell people teach people about media are you happy we'll put you at 11 a.m on Sundays where nobody watches and I like you and stuff, so go do this show where Just, you preach stop. about media from the yeah, CNN's I can point of no, view. I mean, considering the nose job he gave to uh, yeah. uh, Jeff Zucker that time, I can definitely see that that he's this fucking annoying piece of shit. Yeah. That Zucker, Zucker, Jeff Zucker, Jeff Zucker, can I can do I have this? my own can show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I do that? No, can I help you? Can yeah. he, he, he spoke badly about you? I think, man, yeah. Jeff Zucker. I, so I think at some point you just go. Uh, come here, come, come here, come here, come here. Look, uh, Brian, I have a show for you, right? And then you, you every week you have to do research, and you don't, you don't talk to me, right? You don't talk to me. You do your own research on media, and then yeah. you tell people about media. And you know, I think that's how, like Jeff Zucker was based. Yeah, you're right. Trying to get, oh, I, like, just, just get this motherfucker away from me. this creep, <laughs> this, this egg. That has come to life and is just haunting me everywhere I go. But, uh, yeah. God. So I don't even remember what his point was on Ukraine. Russia, I don't, I don't but... remember on the Ukraine thing. I wanted to highlight uh, usefully this, like they did that. The bit he, he plays a bit from Trevor Noah and then, oh my, about anti vaxxer mm. truckers or something. I don't care what was the topic. But the, and the Trevor Noah clip, I don't think he's, I don't, um, again, I am very much coming down on the conclusion that Brian is an egg and not a human, <laughs> like really an egg. <laughs> like, because I don't think he even understands human comedy or interaction and shit. Uh, maybe he's a potato, but uh, you know. People just, think he's a potato. There are pictures of him like a potato, like on a potato really? on the internet. Yeah, the not white, an egg. Yeah. The whiteness but I think egg is more accurate. Yeah, because potato can kind of be any shape, but he's like, he's an yeah, egg. Yeah, he's like two eggs. He's Humpty Dumpty. He's, I swear to God, I, I, I hope he does this sort of those family lineage programs who you think you are. And I swear to God, he turns out he's related to Humpty Dumpty before he fell off the wall. So, you know, and 
<laughs> yeah, he Trevor Noah does this thing, and he I don't think he's done with the joke. He starts to joke, and just because he wants to make a point about how anti-vaxxers are idiots or whatever, he pauses me in the middle of the jokes and he's like, ha 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 I couldn't have said it better than Trevor. And it's just yeah, like you can so much like the, the yeah. transitions from laughter to speaking <laughs> just i mean it was very disturbing you don't want to see yeah see an egg laugh but whatever uh but, but yeah it, it just i hate this guy i and i can't believe he's got this job. he's 36 he's had this job since he's been my age at least yeah no he's God. had this oh show my. for a few years right four or five years uh, at the... least four years i think so it's 36 but years. now it's yeah. more now he's allowed to like cover stories and news But then he yeah. still has to preach about the media. So they're like, okay, I mean, you can talk uh, about Russia, Ukraine, but you know, we don't forget the it. name of your show. Don't forget. We, the- we, uh, we may talk about it if we have time today later. But the Chris Cuomo thing uh, stuff. Mm. I think CNN is getting a bit like less busy. Let's say, <laughs> you know, he's like, yeah, okay, now yeah. I'm gonna comment. Right? I have, I have, I think he's trying to <laughs> see a I'm moment. Like, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, I think that. We're doing some really like what is this armchair psychology? I don't know what, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's seeing yeah, a gap. It's... He's seeing a vacuum, and he's thinking one of these evening shows maybe he can move from the Sunday yeah. 10 uh, a.m. He, slot. Oh, what? <laughs> he, 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 yeah. he feels unleashed yeah. right now, and yeah, I don't. I mean, I feel like we can do armchair psychology of an egg. It's, yeah. it's an egg. Yeah. It's not. A, it's not like how complex. Can but I would bet see? on these things. I swear, I bet you. I think it's probably going knocking around. It's like, come, can I do a story about Taliban now? Come on, please. Like... <laughs> let me. Please let me go to Ukraine and yeah. meet with some Nazis. Please. <laughs> I want to meet some Nazis. I heard <laughs> Anderson Cooper is sick today. Can I please <laughs> <with him? laughs> But good for him. He has ambition. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, he's yeah, ambitious. He's poisoning yeah. Anderson Cooper's <laughs> coffee. Like, oh, he had a diarrhea, so I guess I have to do the show now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Playing pranks. Uh, this, uh, just this guy, though. I mean, But in a way, good for him. I mean, uh, yeah, if he's not there, like, who would you make? For, like, thank God for people like him. Yeah. Like, Thomas, just... Thomas, Thomas Friedman on in the press, <laughs> Brian Estelter in, yeah. like, visual media, Tim Pool in online media. Like, you've got <laughs> everywhere. You need to have somebody like that. But um, if there's, I don't know if there's anything else on Ukraine, Russia. If there isn't, I would say that we just get serious for a few moments, for a few seconds. I'll try to shut up and not interrupt you. And yeah, what's the latest with the Iran nuclear deal? There seems like there uh, might well, actually be something for you to say. <laughs> yes, for once, I'm not going to say, guys, somebody says it's going good. Somebody says it's going bad. We don't know yeah. who's right. <laughs> I mean, now there's a draft 20-page um document whatever where apparently only a few things are missing and the other interesting thing i heard or i read i'm sure you're going to elaborate is this is that you know it's kind of step thing so oil isn't the, the removing sanctions isn't the first thing so that made it seem even more realistic to me that perhaps something is uh, happening and they've reached the some agreements prisoner, the prisoners exchange No, but like the fact that removing all sanctions isn't the first thing that the Iranians want. Oh, Now yeah, they're yeah. agreeing to like apparently yeah, a few steps back and forth before. But yeah, go yeah, ahead. That's basically Iranians backed off. I mean, mm. it seems clear. It. I mean, if I was gonna like at the moment, my historical view is that basically Iranian regime decided to uh, come to understanding with the American regime, but they didn't want to do it under Rouhani because mm. of internal power struggles. So now with race it's gonna get done so uh yeah uh, according there was a leak uh, that reuters uh, got the leak iran nuclear deal draft puts prisoners enrichment cash first oil comes later diplomats say so uh yeah there this there is this seems to be a draft a uh, sort of a revival deal that is in the latest stages all the reporters are saying that talks are positive today iranian foreign minister went to the Uh, Munich security uh, conference, which is uh, probably the most important sort of a security conference mm. uh, in the world. Uh, so uh, the, probably there are, you know, parallel and ongoing negotiations going on. But I mean, 
it, it seems that it's going to happen. It's pretty much, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I am a bit surprised. I was, especially with the, like after a couple of months when I saw that Biden administration was uh, taking no action, I, I was becoming on the camp that Amer- I don't see why would America want to revive the deal mm-hmm. because it's right now Iran is in a perfect position. It's getting a squeeze uh, and it's blamed on Trump. It's not blamed on Democrats. But I don't know whether it's because of international situation, whether it's Biden, because I, I kind of want to talk about that after this. But Biden, I don't know if you saw the interview he did with Lester Holt, no. but Bi- Biden does seem to be far less aggressive than his administration mm. or the, you know, the, uh, this the military the Iran topic. complex on every topic. It seems that's the thing that I don't know. I don't agree. I mean, I'm, this is just pure risk. Yeah, I mean, except China, but, perhaps you could say, but maybe Russia maybe, and yeah, Ukraine. Yeah. But no, I'm, I'm comparing him to his administration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, like so, the spokesperson yeah, or... Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, on the Ukraine thing, for example, he famously blundered about the minor inc- yeah. incursion. Yeah, yeah. And then everybody in his administration was like, no, no, yeah, that's what Lincoln. that meant. With Afghanistan, everybody was begging him to stay mm. and do a surge, according to some reports. And he was like, no, fuck that, we're getting out. So I don't, maybe it's the Biden sort That's of a factor point. but but maybe maybe but i was uh, i was originally on the camp that i don't see the deal revived because uh i'm not say i i in a way i am happy because it probably will affect my life in a positive way mm. financially but in a way i am politically speaking i am very i don't know man i have a feeling we're gonna revive this deal we're gonna have two three more years of again bullshit positive talks with iran about investments uh, none of it is going to happen. And then next Republican president is going to tore uh, up the deal again. So possibly. Uh, man, yeah. And there's a whole my... Congress aspect. And yeah, the Biden stuff, that's an interesting point you, you made, you know, Biden on Afghanistan. I mean, his foreign policy are one of the few things that you could say that, you know, he managed to follow up or that he did. And people say even during the Obama period, he was telling Obama, I guess this was one thing where he had an opinion on, which was I not to... T- not to increase the troop numbers in Afghanistan. But I had also one thing. Do you think oil prices perhaps also pushed the Biden administration? Because, you know, maybe this will help oil prices to come down, which is something that Biden and Biden's administration want to happen. So whether that's because of spec, because it comes down, mm. because there's a deal uh, uh, or because there's more oil in the market, yeah, yeah, no, the no, Americans no, I, wouldn't I, I, mind. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I think the I think I think that's my it's, it's so much a speculation because it's, you know we are not in the meeting rooms. But I think the, uh, him or people like him within the administration are probably calculating there is just too much at hands right now. There is the inflation. There is the energy. Mm. There is the supply crisis, energy crisis, Ukrainian crisis, Taiwanese crisis, Iranian nuclear stuff with uh, you know yeah, Israel uh, and all that. So I think they are trying to sort of readjust, so to speak. Because as you mentioned, for example, in ch- case of China, they mo- they are not de-escalating at all. Yeah. In, in fact, they may be escalating in case of China and North Korea. So I think it's more of a adjustment. And maybe you're right. Maybe part of that calculation is that, guys, at the moment, we need to get inflation under control. One of that is to reduce the energy prices. Yeah. And that's, yeah, uh, that, okay, fuck that. Let's just make a deal with Iran for a while or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, you're right. That I didn't even think of that. Yeah. yeah, perhaps. And I mean, and this is the last round of the talks, right? So I think if it was over, maybe it would have been too hard to revive it again next year or six months or something. But I, I like still that. don't understand why in any way it would benefit. I mean... Why would I benefit the uh, U.S.? Now that you said the oil prices, that's like even, but even that's not Iran. Is yeah, we're talking about $10 player. a barrel. I mean, it could go down because of, you know, because these things, you know, they're a bit have to it's do already with how going people down. Bend. Yeah, It's already going down with Russia when Russia started pulling its troops back from Ukraine. But again, Iran is just not that big of a player even in the uh, like oil market yeah. anymore, especially after these years where they're But I mean, got... you know, what about this being always in the U.S.'s benefit, which is to always to not wanting Iran get a nuclear um, weapon? Isn't that like in their interest, or at least they claim that is? I don't, I think that's just the... Because I mean, I guess story. that's the that's whole reason. Of, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the whole just rhetoric. presented r- rhetoric. Yeah. And I mean, I mean you know, want... perhaps keeping them away from make, becoming closer and closer to China, although this kind of opens up but I don't <laughs> the doors to sell was... more oil to China, because 
Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Not like trying to stop Iran from getting closer to Russia and China, maybe, although I think that's too late now. But the nuclear thing, I think they don't want Iran to have nuclear weapon, of course, because that sort of guarantees Islamic Republic's sort of, it not doesn't guarantee its survival, but it guarantees it against US. Mm-hmm. But uh, so, but I, but I don't think that's the main thing. They're mostly... I, I really don't know. I genuinely don't know. What yeah, what are the reasons? I think America is increasingly... Uh, like, I think, to be honest, I think this is a culmination of 100-year sort of relationship Iran has had with the West. I think increasingly America is realizing Iran is the sort of the Russia of Europe mm-hmm. or China of the... Uh, China of the... Uh, sorry. Uh, China of the East Middle Asia, East, sort of. Yeah. Uh, like, it needs to... Uh, it needs to... Um, uh, sort of uh, uh, come to an understanding to it for some kind of a stability in Middle East region. And I think not just Americans, as I've mentioned before, Saudis and Israelis and uh, UAE. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, they're all trying to do, sorry, uh, they're all trying to do, uh, you know, negotiations with Iran. So I think they're getting to the point where they are saying okay fuck it islamic republic let them in the game yeah and you're right there are also negotiations going on with the saudis and everything yeah you're right there um okay uh, anything else on progressive geopolitics uh yeah i wanted to ma- i kind of mentioned in yeah. the lester holt interview man i love fucking biden yeah. i love this matter <laughs> like lester holt is like there are reports that the military people uh, uh, are saying that you know I love Lester Holt's voice. I wish I had that voice, but uh, yeah, the military people were warning you about the ensuing chaos that was going to happen in Afghanistan as you were leaving. And Biden is just this old man, <laughs> like kind of clean this with it, like that's not what I was told. Oh, I was like, what? what? No, fuck them. They're lying. <laughs> they're, those, you have to share this told, clip with and, me. And, yeah, and then and then he's like, you know, they, you know what? You know what? They said they're gonna. You need to even increase troops if you want to stay in Afghanistan <laughs> and continue this war of attrition. And I said, no way, Jose. <laughs> fuck that shit. <laughs> so, just, I like that guy so much. Yeah. And I don't no. know why for some reason. Uh, yeah, we'll get. Sorry, I'll I'll cover that in another second. No worries. Yeah, I think with the Afghanistan thing, he's like decided he's like no with this i've been right <laughs> this is one thing i know i'm right i don't <laughs> care what you say there is no backlash it doesn't matter one thing is like, i made up I my mind for some reason i think because he can't be watched because he's old and clearly in a mental situation yeah. i don't think he watches as much tv so he can't be put into that mindset of mm. they can't bullshit him like they yeah. you know they put you in this pincer position yeah like, oh there is a humanitarian yeah. crisis no oh, no you God, have God, to God. give it they, they came they all the media's power was mobilized during those they two tried, weeks man. of the yeah, withdrawal i mean they, they called in cnn could. msnbc like everyone go say oh, that man. the whole world is gonna implode I if this that. happens but what was that kudos Biden? to him yeah what was it when there is one thing in afghanistan i think when he says yeah come at me it's like almost like a come at me, bro. By the mind, yeah. Well, bring it on. He says, bring it on. I don't remember, to what, but he was. He looked so based. Yeah. He was just so, yeah. Bring it on. And with the, you know, he's just yeah. yeah he's, no. Sometimes he's. I'm, I must say, even though I'm very critical of him, even though he's is stealing Afghanistani children's money and all that, objectively, probably the best American president ever. In our life since, in, since in no like ever i can't like since johnson mm-hmm. since Johnson. because a few of them have done he hasn't been able to do too much domestically but a few of them did one or two domestic Even things domestic. that were considered harmful so like you know whoever you want yeah. to talk about obama clinton. clinton i guess how far back would you go i guess to find carter yeah. carter has started the taliban yeah i then finished it at least you know Car- it is carter has started yeah. the american involvement in afghanistan so yeah i i he's yeah even internally man the the even though it was very disappointing the the, the bills infrastructure stuff, bill yeah. it was according to some reports one of the largest you know blah blah blahs 
So even domestically, like, I mean, it's just, it proves just how bad former presidents have been. Mm. But so far, he's yeah. been objectively like the best. Yeah, and on, uh, yeah, here the China stuff, I guess, is one that you know. I mean, if he starts a war, but the in China, China sentiment, in man, Ukraine, I see then. it. It's everywhere. I don't know. Um, I was just going to become very anecdotal suddenly. It's just that no, no. in a there's I, a I, lot definitely. of anti-China like hate that I think didn't exist 20 years ago, 10 years ago, and now it's very widespread between among European leaders and American um it's, leaders. it's because I think Chinese ascendancy has become yeah. pretty much a inevitability at this point. And you can see the hatred coming yeah. up. And not that by the way, there is obviously problems with China. China is a country like any other i'm sure corruption blah 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 i'm just saying that the reason why the hate is becoming so yeah. animated because 20 i mean go watch norm mcdonald's snl weekend updates half of the jokes is about how clinton loves the chinese mm. all right sam let's do some quick hitters before we move on to the film review section our final segment for today so let's finish up a bit on the Biden on Biden because I don't think you wanted to speak about Afghanistan, but you had uh, you wanted to touch on well, some other it's, points. It's the, our weekly uh, compulsory the hill uh, sort of. Uh, Wait, this relates to the hill. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's the because Kim Ivers. First of all, we just finished check out our geopolitics brief. Whatever, check out few minutes ago <laughs> so, yeah kim iverson i don't know why but she's very critical of biden mm, for i haven't this. picked like, up I don't on know that why. yeah I, yeah she was like this is not about pulling out or not pulling out this is about the chaos that was in sudan and stuff and the idea oh, on afghanistan I, on afghanistan on afghanistan yeah sorry i'm not very clear today uh, uh i don't give exposition i don't know why but uh yeah she was uh, she was very she did a whole radar whatever they call yeah. it thingy that she was very neat and by the way i'm a fan of hers generally uh, by the way she should have gone on that panel instead of that radio host lady that that's she, interesting. anyway she wouldn't anyway. have just done that though she would have no she wouldn't no she's, she wouldn't accept she that role tough. but she doesn't Even, hang out with them though she's not part of the same gang anyway keep going she's hanged out with brie i guess when Did she you? came over on the hill oh true well they have to hang out with each other. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, okay, I don't. Um, but I mean, I haven't seen her on Katie thing. Halper's show or on Bree's Bad Fate show. I mean, that's what I no, mean. No, no. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But I would say, yeah, anyways, uh, yeah, she's whatever her take, good or bad, I would say she, whenever she interviews, she does seem to ask. Mm -hmm. Not always. There is one exception. But anyway, yeah. but, but uh, anyways, I disagreed with her take because I, like, whenever you pulled out of Afghanistan, this would have happened. There was no way that, like, there were people with vested interest that, were making sure this would happen because they knew this would be a stick against leaving. Mm -hmm. You know, the same yeah. people who were saying the chaos would ensue were the same people who were guaranteeing that chaos would ensue yeah. because they they had mm -hmm. vested interest, vested. And so many other other reasons perhaps to exactly. So I think like based on America's capacity and you're totally right and like all the vested <laughs> interest in doing that, whether Americans took another month, two, three, four months of planning which we know they wouldn't do it's like people procrastinate on their work until like the last minute kind of the same thing would have uh hey, would have hey, happened that feels like a personal attack on me <laughs> no, but, yeah. even myself uh yeah i mean the fact the idea that in reality it could have been done any better i mean of course it could have been done better but that it would have happened better is wishful thinking i would say me too, me too. Sadly, even though I do think it was a tragedy, uh, I mean, the, it was a goddamn betrayal of like, you know, going to somebody else's mm -hmm. uh, land, nation, whatever you want to call it, destroying it, murdering innocent people, but according to your own report, 90% uh, yeah. sort of hitting civilian targets. And then, yeah, let's guys go back home. It's too expensive to, you know, build this place. Fuck off. Yeah. Let's go. But then again, no, yeah. if, if they stayed, would they have done it? built it in 10 years in no 15? exactly like, that's the thing in afghanistan yeah. the only thing you can say they truly tried is all kinds of like fighting troops they <laughs> did <laughs> you know militias <laughs> they did droning they did they were like we've done it all like there's no water if not we would have done like navy attacks as well but like, <laughs> 
Oh, in the underwear. <laughs> Mercenaries, <laughs> private groups, you know, like the Prince guy. What was his name? Like he had his own chapter, which seems like so long ago. Um, the the mercenary guy, Prince. Um, oh, Eric Prince. Eric Prince. Prince. You know, like he's no, so, no, he he's, didn't succeed though. He was but trying back to get he there. was though. No, he, he was trying he to succeeded, lobby. got kicked out, went back. Like, oh, I'm pretty yeah, yeah. sure he you, was oh, involved you went way back. That, no, no, you that's went the way thing, back. it goes so far back that, yeah, yeah, yeah everything black, yeah, yeah, yeah. has been tried out. Like, tried yeah, out. I mean, they, they were kicked out of Iraq because of the thing that yeah. happened in the mosque in the square yeah. there. But I, Eric Prince in 2016 was lobbying Trump or 2017, yeah, was lobbying Trump to sort of. Privatized army, man. Yeah. Just, yeah, just let the mercenaries yeah. go in. You know, it, which that would have been the, that would have been the worst. God, like that would have Jesus yeah. Christ. I wonder what nightmare would have turned. But continuing my uh, the hill coverage, um, yeah, she also had. A, I thought Kim also had a really bad take on the far right and stuff. Far far right, like does not mean racist. Do you is know? she saying is that how it's understood though nowadays in in society? Even okay, I'm tired of this. How it's understood? Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of this bullshit. Like how it's understood? I don't care how it's understood. <laughs> Listen, just <laughs> like Chomsky said, every word has two meanings. One is his actual meaning, and one one is his political contemporary understanding. And Under right the, wing, yeah. sorry, yeah, far right nowadays has nothing to do with I guess you being extremely conservative it has to do with you being a white supremacist racist Not, no no in I mainstream media overlap. i feel like that's how they, they overlap, portray it but i would say in many ways in my view sager is far right he's not a white supremacist but yeah, he's yeah. far right definitely. but that's kim's understanding right kim kim sees whenever you call someone as far right as someone who is um you know white extremely supremacist. white supremacist no, yeah. well, yeah, I know, but the educators, it's kind mm. of like that. I'm so, but what is going on? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking to people, like, I'm not going to parties telling yeah. people not to say far right uh, is by, like, <laughs> oh, oh wh- what did you mean by far right? <laughs> How do you define it? I'm talking about news yeah. programs yeah. and like sort of education programs. So I feel like I'm in the right to say, educate yourself. Far right means reactionary, means nationalistic, means sort of as going back to the, you know, nostalgia for the past, for the nation, for the blah. In each country, it has a slightly different definition. There is significant overlaps with racial uh, ideologies, whatever you want to call them. But it does have its own. It's like saying far left means uh, far left means definitely means you are a, a Stalinist. Yeah. No, no it's no. just it means different things. There, there is an overlap between far left and Stalinism. But it's not just that you yeah. not get like that's I mean I do what is the point of language <laughs> we have words for definition yeah I, it, I get so annoyed when yeah. she was no, like I, oh it's so derogatory they are far right I'm sorry the truckers I, I don't think the, a lot of them are racist but they are a lot of them are far right what yeah. do you want us to say like they're not far right what, what? I'm sorry I don't. yeah and I mean, yeah exactly I mean yeah I can't disagree with you much there's just the in they've made far right or far left meaning that you're you're pretty much you're like you know criminal <laughs> in what, what, uh, one way or another pretty much you know yeah no, like I, a far I, left again, someone is you know someone who would go i guess vandalize things by themselves with their cause or something that's like when they add the word far i feel like that's the understanding in people's um minds you know if you're far left or you're far enough. right that means you're a I would say if you're say you're far left or far right, there is I would it comes to my head as well that these people are more inclined to be willing to break the law or to be disregard radical, the yeah. law. Yeah, be radical to do their thing. But that has nothing to do with racism. Yeah. Again, that has nothing to do like people, whether underground, whatever they were called, the yeah. leftist sort of a, a militant group in 70s. You know, they were far left, but they like, but it doesn't mean like they were all that was there is too far left. You know what I mean? Like, yes, there are white supremacists who are far right, but far right has it, I, again, yeah. sorry, I'm just, no, this is my English teaching mm-hmm. sort of 
aspect kicking in. I just, I feel like so confused sometimes these days because <laughs> they keep changing the vocabulary. They keep, far right is now working derogatory. Man, I thought it's descriptive. Um, I if don't, that's I don't what, we, yeah, I mean, this just reminded me. Yeah, you're right though. I mean, for me, that bugs me even way more than that. It happens all the time is when we keep on, everybody does it, replacing Democrat, the, the Dem, people who are Democrats, literally Democrats in the US with the word left. And then I don't even know who you're talking yeah, about. They're like the left. Yeah. I'm like, what? Okay, the left. Are you talking about Democrats or really left? And it does make these conversations harder to have too, because you don't even know who and what is talking about. Yeah, I, I just yeah try to, or at least, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But it has become that, that has become the definition, I guess. Like, I mean, she's not alone in that, but you're right. She's, you know, she's a, news anchor so perhaps it should be on her no, I, I, it's just yeah it was uh, very much because we had that discussion earlier about the idea that you know on the ground and yeah it's just i'm tired of it it's right. <laughs> <laughs> because it, i i go with it at parties and stuff you know yeah. i'm i never i'm not that uh, it doesn't come across but i'm not that much of a i'm pretty quiet yeah. in, like in in public <laughs> unless i have somebody like Amir who's willing to suffer my uh, bullshit uh, but but like when I come to news and stuff, at least here, please some clarity for fact. <laughs> no, I agree with you there. But okay, we have two more um, quick hitters. Metaverse, which we'll leave for the end to not talk about it too much and get carried away. So let's first okay. start with Kyle and Crystal. You apparently like the guests that they had. You like this is like one of the first yeah, good I mean, one. I didn't get to listen to it. Sorry. So you just have to quickly perhaps oh, summarize no. it away. There was, yeah. to be fair, they just talked about Biden. It was, but they. Who was the, the guy though? Time, I didn't recognize him. I he, didn't he's, know him. He's Felix from the Chapa Trap House guys. Oh, he's the gamer guy. Uh, he's the game. I mean, boy. that's why he's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My boys. <laughs> <laughs> and lady, Amber. <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, for the first time, it was. I was interested in seeing Chris <laughs> and friends and Yogi Bear and others. But so it was, uh, yeah, it was great to have. I was, I was happy that finally after, what was it? Uh, Peterson? No, no. David Dole. Peterson didn't rent. Huh? No. Did he? No, he didn't no. go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wash and, you know, other important <laughs> figures. Uh, so, yeah, finally somebody who I consider to be really interesting. So, uh, yeah, I might. I'm not. I don't know. I'm. I'm gonna try to. The audio version is free, right? Yeah, um, I believe so. I mean, right, I haven't so, checked yeah, out their stuff in pay for so long that I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's. Yeah. What, but then something also <laughs> happened in their personal life, and I don't. Know, you got really angry with me. You were like, <laughs> I don't trust you anymore. I don't. Because <laughs> Sam is I, okay, so I'm like, so of course there's a photo which even the Vanguard covered. It's a photo that photo. Kyle posted on Twitter, and he's just holding Crystal in his arms and giving her a kiss. And I believe Crystal replied, "What, like heart, purple heart, um, red heart? heart? I don't understand yeah, the meaning of the purple of heart." But Sam is like, "Yeah, wait. So are people speculating that they're together?" I'm like, "What other message can you get from <laughs> this picture? I don't know." I don't know how else you could interpret this, uh, this picture on, on Valentine's Day. You can have, you can, I, I gave a gift to my mom on Valentine's Day. Is that a crime? <laughs> That's different. <laughs> if you post some racy picture with your mom, I might get suspicious. No, the picture could have been like a... You want to kiss on the cheek. That's well, why yeah, I but I mean, the confused. whole co the concept and stuff, I think, makes it clear. But yeah, I mean, the last few times I heard Crystal talk right. about this, she sounded like she was married, but I guess she hasn't been married because they said, because yeah, apparently it's been, there have been rumors. I think the Vanguard guy said there have been rumors. I didn't pick up on any of the rumors, anything yeah, like I, uh, that. We, in which rumor, I mean, I don't <laughs> know how big, but I mean, I get, I really, yeah, I didn't, I I mean, until you clarified it to me, I was like, oh, am I onto something? I like, of course, <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> no, that yeah, was all right, clear. I see. But okay, yeah, whatever. good for them. But, but I, I'm glad that we have, like the progressive world has its own version of Joe and Mika now, you know? <laughs> Who Joe and Mika. Wait, I feel like I know them. Who are they? Joe and Mor Mika. The Morning Joe. The oh, Joe. yeah, yeah, yeah. They got married, right? Or something. Yeah, yeah. And and I think at the time, Mika was married to somebody else when they got together. Mika Berzinski, by the way, the daughter of the great uh, Berzinski, the founder of Taliban. <laughs> but yeah. And yeah, so we have our own version of that's yeah. interesting. 
But that's a bit worrisome for me because that, I mean, not that I care too much, but I would imagine like at the board, like if their personal relationship yeah. deteriorates, the show is done. No, honestly, like I would never work. I mean, okay, they would start working together and then they started so, dating. Yeah. But yeah, but I would never want to work where my wife works. Or I wouldn't really want to get into any kind of work or thing. Like this podcast thing that we're doing as friends, I feel like this is like, as far as I would go in such a relationship because it's just easier to keep it separate. I definitely agree. And, but at the same time though, as I've, yeah, I mean, I'm, you, you know, I've, I'm single. So I sometimes wonder like, okay, because I always went like, okay, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be in a relationship with a housemate. I don't want to be in a relationship with a close mate. I don't want to be in a relationship with a co-worker. All of this because it causes drama. I don't want to be in a relationship with a friend of my friend's girlfriend because, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then you're like, nobody's left. Like, when <laughs> do I ever meet anyone? Like, no, I don't have any pro. I think all of those are okay. It's only the work one that's the worst because that's the only one where you're stuck. If it's a housemate, no, if you don't like doesn't your, go well, you move to another house. Your, your friend's girlfriend's sister, you know, if you date them or something, or yeah. their best friend, you know what I mean? No, it's I think you should drama. forget about those because, I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. life is drama. So I think that's pushing I don't exactly it. know who is left except like <laughs> random people in the streets. That you... <laughs> don't look at me, okay? <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that, but <laughs> we're only friends and in a professional. <laughs> Come here. I've been <laughs> alone never. for a while. <laughs> I feel like I've been at the sea for a while. <laughs> I don't know if you recall Herman Melville. <laughs> okay, I think last year, that week, that was your point with that book, huh? With, what's it called? Yeah, the That's homoerotic. It. Yeah. I am still reading it. It's good. Yeah. It's a good book. But what's yeah, it called I, again, I, the book? Uh, just mention it. A Moby Dick. Moby Dick, yeah. I mean, which, by the way, again, it should, I'm like the Crystal and Kyle thingy. I'm just such an idiot. Uh, like, I was like, just last week after like reading, I think 12 chapters, I was like, oh, Moby Dick. <laughs> that's, that's another, yeah, that's already a good hint. That's, that's, that's a good hint. About it's just too coming. obvious. Yeah. Maybe it's referring to something else. Yeah, I, I feel like I can't, if it's too obvious, I miss it. <laughs> I, I can't do it. But speaking but yeah, of that, workplaces and all that. But, I feel, just... but yeah, the Go attack ahead. on me personally, I feel was unjustified. <laughs> let's talk about metaverse for a split second there is no story here really it's just probably working for facebook is the worst place ever right now except the fact that you're making money so i'd rather go somewhere else if i was them let me just read you two sentences let me just read you two sentences from this washington post article i sent you ceo mark zuckerberg who renamed the company meta last year held up a slide deck showcasing new corporate values prioritize meta followed by a person's team, metamates, followed by the individual, me. What I can just imagine how they're behaving in there. Like people have probably been working on some project or something that nothing to do with metaverse and their bosses and stuff come like, this is, this is not good. It's all about the metaverse. I can just imagine how they're trying to shove this like metaverse thing down their own throats. Because of course, corporate culture is always bullshit. But I'm getting a feeling there's like the usual corporate culture bullshit and then them trying to, you know, shove this metaverse down their employees' throats. And even, it's, you know, I've seen no, no, this, I feel like, you before know, at they, workplaces where there's suddenly an obsession with going to this new direction. And even the things that they themselves have done before is considered like not good and like bad for some reason or just have to be dropped and forget about it. Like apparently, they're, you know, they're taking employees from different areas and just telling them reapply to work in, in, in for metaverse no uh, I, I it's kind of uh, to be you're right corporate culture has always been or business culture has yeah. always been bullshit right but it's kind of like the new religions mm. you know what i mean like you yeah, know old yeah. religions christianity <laughs> the stuff you're used to the new religions they suddenly you you are a bit shell shocked yeah. by the level of like yes, yeah, Zenu came from a different <laughs> planet and blew up Earth, and then the souls were injected into cats, yeah. and then the cats were uh, yeah. it's like okay, fuck that. you know you just get shell shocked because it's just so. I mean, it's just so stupid. Yeah. I mean, the whole met. No, you're not allowed to call your, your meta mates. Yeah. 
meta project yeah. meta oh i want to marry i like yeah. if somebody talks to me about this type i mean oh by the way breaking news i started a job <laughs> uh, at a company and it's uh, it's in advertising i've i've worked in tech and advertising <laughs> pretty much uh, and it's just man i'm getting very <laughs> similar vibes and there are no this is a common people. thing this is yeah, that's why so i common. recognize it because i've seen it i've worked yeah, somewhere and, I, I must say, at least they're Facebook. These are fucking <laughs> yeah. tiny companies, you know, and they are talking about this. Yeah, you know, we're gonna, we are not teammates, we are not co workers, yeah. we are mates or friends. Or, yeah. Fuck off, give me money, you assholes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's, it sounds like a nightmare. And uh, But I wanna update you on it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know this. Great, exciting announcement. Are you ready for Please. this? Are you sitting now? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, JP Morgan and Chase, the bank, they have opened a branch in the metaverse. Oh, <laughs> I'm That's so amazing. excited. I can't wait to buy the VR set and go to my banking there. And, you know, hopefully we get, uh, you know, sooner or later we get the, you know, we get embassies there. We get, I don't know, like all, all uh, you know, governmental offices. That could happen. All the nice stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully it will. Yeah. It will. And apparently, I haven't seen it, but Colbert uh, covered it, the Colbert report. Yeah. And apparently, if you go to the Chase uh, Bank uh, stuff, there is a tiger walking in the lobby. <laughs> and then there is a painting of Jamie, uh, Jamie Diamond on the wall. The, the NFT. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's go- he, I, I love it that we, in the metaverse, we can go full on, you know, a Stalinist or Maoist. There will be pictures. Can we do? That's fo- interesting. <laughs> there will be pictures of our overlord, James Diamond, you know, Jeff Bezos. No, wait, I think Zuckerberg. you're talking about something very damn. No, I think you're onto something English. serious, actually, accidentally. <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> I started off with a joke, but now I'm actually thinking about censorship on the metaverse. What if you like, yeah, own? <laughs> I don't know. I guess at home you could own like Nazi portraits or stuff like that. What if you own it <laughs> in the yeah, metaverse? Yeah. Uh, I would say though, I, I'm my only hope is that this project will. I mean, if not enough people sign up for the gaming on metaverse and stuff, it will collapse. And I hope it does. Because I hate metaverse, I hate Instagram, I hate yeah. WhatsApp, and I just wish they go away. Like I really, I don't care if yeah. they steal my data. I just want a better fucking service. Yeah, man. If if I was a yeah if yeah the, if I was a Facebook worker right now, I would definitely want to move to Google or something. Because I feel like there at least they let you work on like a different project, and they won't be so annoying with one thing. There, there is be metaverse, metaverse. <laughs> like, oh man. The poor guys like probably like. I'm an Instagram UX designer. <laughs> Wait, you want me yeah. to? <laughs> Should I stop all my Instagram work? Like, so I mean, if, if, like I criticize Avatar, but at least the graphics in Avatar were good. The graphics in this are crap. It's like 1970s 3D cinema. It's like, oh, for fucks, yeah. I, I hate it. I but we Meta. saw like the Facebook shares, so I mean, they clearly need to. They've decided that they need to do something in order to survive. Yeah, yeah. Anything I mean, else I here thought... in the quick hitters? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right, Sam, let's do a little film review and, of course, connect it to different political and social aspects in life as we like to do. So the movie, you told me to watch it and not because you thought it was like <laughs> a must-watch good. movie or a good movie, anything like that, called The Kingsman. No, it's The King's Man, sorry, not The King's Man. The King's Man, and it's a new movie, 2021, action and comedy. And I believe the storyline, I guess, is it takes place starting around early 1900s, going up to World War One, And it's about, like, you know, World War One and how these... Is it about it World starts... War I? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that's... Well, a... it's about the... It feels like it's about, like, it's the origin of story. I mean, first of all, a spoiler alerts. Oh, yeah. Mild sure. spoiler alerts, and then... I'm going to give another spoiler alert for the uh, main twist, which is, I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it feels like it felt. And it's to, told to me, from the perspective. Like so- Origin. Go ahead. No, no. Sorry. No, I was just going to say the main characters are British lords. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> just for people to have a full <laughs> British lords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the main character is Duke of Oxford. Yes, and uh, yeah, uh, 
it feels like the origin story of the deep state. <laughs> like the like the Batman begins of the deep state. It's so weird. It is because it, it starts first of all. It's directed by one of I think you like his works because I think you were a big fan of Kickass. I feel. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought it was, was a good man. Good That's why the uh, I uh, you know mm, the I, fighting I, scenes. That makes sense. Yeah, he's very. He's. I mean, he's. I like Matthew one so much. I really like a Stardust Layer Cake. You know, but this is the mo- like this is the British reactionaries. Mm. I mean, at its like at its zenith, like it was so weirdly. I mean, it was so weirdly reactionary, yet trying to grapple with real political stuff. Like it starts with the first cases, first like official cases of concentration camps in South Africa, history, right? Which, so, and, yeah. In Boer War, yeah, during the Boer War, the British put the Dutch in the concentration the camps. british put the dutch in south africa south africa in concentration camps yes yes Interesting. I, maybe blacks tribal blacks that cooperated with them too i don't remember a specific I, yeah that's the first case of like concentration camp he's usually referred to mm. I mean, i'm sure there are earlier versions or whatever so it starts from there and the duke of oxford guy works for red cross and he's a like he's a a uh, good guy like he's very he's critical of the concentration camp and then you got a real historical ca- character william kitchener uh, mm. kitchener kitchener i don't know how you, you know the guy in the british posters with the mustache yeah uh, you sign up your army mm. needs you whatever you know uh, he's a historical guy and uh, i don't uh, you don't care if i spoil it for you right no i mean i watch half of it at least i mean yeah, did you get to the point where he dies the kid dies The yeah. Kitchener, no. Oh no, Kitch- Kitchener, uh, no. No. Oh uh, well, he dies as well. Kitchener, mm-hmm. that's a real thing as well. He did die in a like when he was uh, traveling on a boat. That that was again like there are some like Rasputin. Yeah. They cover Rasputin. He's real, real right? historical <laughs> figure. Yeah, yeah. But he wasn't doing. He wasn't doing kung fu, and he wasn't feeding opium to the yeah. kid. And then that was I mean so the, that, the, that that it's just. By the way, if you're Russian to a lesser extent, German, what the fuck? Like <laughs> you are pre- like the like the presentation of World War One is just such a bullshit. It's such a bullshit about the egos of these three cousins that there is this deep bad. Like the bad, the main bad guy is the let's call him the the bad deep state. <laughs> so he's the bad deep state. By the way. This is not a like a twist, big twist, but he's of a Scottish origins, and his whole main like problem with the British Empire is that like they colonized uh, Scotland and took away his family meal from him, and that's problematic on its own because Scotland was not it wasn't the case it wasn't the similar case as with Ireland. In fact, it was the Scottish Crown that took over the British Parliament, English Parliament. Interesting. So it was they were invited, but so it's I mean that. Just on its okay, whatever there, whatever there, whatever you know, <laughs> yeah. But I get back to why it's really problematic making the guy a Scottish and mm, uh, about the thing. But but that was really like the whole like the, that that guy is pushing. Is I mean the bad guy's plan is just ridiculous. I mean I don't know what the was bad his guy. plan because okay, there's like this meeting that they have. He gets what like one person from like each of the empires and he yes, gathers them together so from like the russians a, he gets rasputin he gets person from the, 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 the english german guy is a historical figure german, the, Ger- and the german guy was actually a jewish uh a jewish what do you call it like a charlatan a and what did charlatan. he want them to do They, they, uh, they, they, he, they, they were all pushing their leaders including the uh, wilhelm the Kaiser of Germany and mm. Tsar uh, of Russia, they were pushing them towards war. But mm-hmm. then, because like because they have to abide by history, then suddenly his plan changes that now the war has to come to Britain. To I mean, he's a Scottish accent, by the way. I mean, I mean, it's kind of plays into the twist at the end, but he's a Scottish accent. I'm from Scotland <laughs> and the British Scot, you're shite. It was the most like okay, we get it. You're Scottish, like you know, calm down. Like the Scottish people, I don't think as a whole speak that Scottish. Yeah, you know, like, but yeah, it's yeah. Then he his plan changes that the war has to 
so because as it's famous that I mean that's my pro the World War One, like it's the Tsar didn't want to stop World War One. Soldiers, Russian soldiers went AWOL. Uh, almost German soldiers went AWOL. There was almost I mean there was a revolution in uh, Russia because of sure. the, the war, and then in Germany there was almost a revolution. So this idea that you know. Uh, uh, like the war was, there were these figures like Rasputin, you know, this, uh, this Kung Fu master. Uh, I mean, the Rasputin thing was, I mean, it was ridiculous. Like, I mean, I mean what the, f I mean, it, it was so ridiculous that almost made it good because it was like but cartoonish. It was kind of made, for, you know what it reminded me of? I mean, I feel like mm. it was kind of made, I guess, for, for, you know, what's that movie like about the League of Nations or something? And there's like all these, like, it's an old movie from like 20 years League ago. League of and Extraordinary Gentlemen? Yeah. Like all these. Yeah, but that's yeah. crap too. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. It just yeah, had the yeah. exact same vibe. No, no, but, but yeah, but Matthew One was disappointing and Ralph, uh, I can never pronounce his family name. Uh, Fiance, Fins, I don't know. But he's just like, in my view, he's probably one of the greatest living actors out there. It was just so, and I love that. Like, that's why mixed feeling, the theme of this episode. Like, everything in this film was like things I like the <laughs> sword fighting, the fencing, the dresses, the right. Savile Road suits. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, ah, yeah, like, you know, I was orgasmic <laughs> aesthetically. And like content yeah. wise, I was like, ah, like, no, it was just so mixed. I feel you a bit there too, because I'm always jealous of like the office space that these like aristocrats like had in like the 1900s and stuff you know it's just this awesome room like everything the, wooden the and brown and, and they always oh. hang out just there in that room because that's a little thing so i was jealous of that i love that and the sword fighting scene there's one in russia that happens and that one was really good because of course they went over the, the board choreography it was fantastic. like dancing in it and the music with it was amazing I mean, the guy was the literally dancing. that was very that was a fight and that was a fun fight scene yeah i mean the war the fight scenes and the war scenes are all, all pretty good in my view yeah uh, i mean you mentioned the fact that the, that's like that's why the movie is so weird because it does take some radical steps like the character that is built up this son who sees his mother passes away in the beginning of the movie uh, and is sort of built up as the main character ends up uh, ends up dying in the middle of the film. Yeah. And that's, I, I thought that was, I mean, I don't know if you know it, but the, I feel sometimes for the British people, World War One is even more important mm. than Second World War. And Perhaps. especially because of the senseless death of young people, that's always what's talked about, the senseless death of young people who went and just ran to the towards the, you know, machine guns. Yeah, uh, and especially, I mean, that was one of, yeah, I mean, World War II, they probably crazy. did it as well, but no, no, in World but, War but, One, there was people fighting in the trenches and coming out and just... And yeah, they were still like riding with a horse yeah. and a sword towards the machine gun. So it was, you know, it was just, yeah. you know, the, the technology had just, you know, yeah. the... Uh, what was and that's actually a theme in the Maxine, movie because they, they're focused with the, uh, with the knives and the swords. And then there's a lady who's like, you know, who's like guns are like the future and stuff like that. Everybody's yeah, yeah, the new boys are messy. Yeah. Yeah, no, but then, yeah, so the movie takes that weird step of the main, this guy dies in the middle of the yeah. movie. The, the guy you think is the main character dies. But he does, like, oh, by the way, the main bad guy is now, the main bad guy is trying to, like, the war is continuing and the British are now involved. The bad guy is keeping the America out mm -hmm. because he knows if America comes in, then it's over. I, I, yeah, whatever. Like by Britain won't be destroyed, and the way they are keeping Wilson, the American president, out is through basically they they send a spy to, uh, to what you call it, to seduce him, <laughs> and then have a tape of him, uh, which. Uh, which I have a tape of him, and then the uh, the guy who dies, but uh, he dies, but he plays a crucial role in bringing about the like they basically they go and fight the guy, uh, and they get the uh, blackmailing whatever video off of him, and now I'm gonna uh, did you the bad the main bad guy you don't see his face right yeah. throughout the movie, but you do see him uh, spoiler alert again as another character. Okay. Can you, can you guess which one it was? I guessed it from the first second. No, not at all. And I was going to look it up now, but I didn't want to spoil it. Do you even remember? Do you know that he goes to the, in the beginning of the movie, he goes to the concentration camp and there's a soldier that greets him. Yeah, yeah. And he says that. There are two soldiers. 
the 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 one that is the young yeah. one that is uh, William Kitch the Kitchener's uh, sort of I don't know uh, deputy yeah whatever, like you know the, the, oh, the, I don't remember his face I didn't recognize him so I don't think it was an actor did, I knew oh he's famous Matthew Goody he also was uh, in the they were in Savile Road they in the thing in the boat oh you didn't watch that part. no I didn't get the boat part. yeah well that guy I mean as soon as he said in the very beginning of the movie that's just the remember that like it's a good like whenever a director or a writer there is a throwaway evil line mm. said very quickly <laughs> that's like okay that's the main bad guy so because he said oh you know that's how we are winning this war so oh. eh? when talking about concentration i remember camp, that was I like, remember. yeah that's how we're winning this war eh? and i was like okay he's a bad guy <laughs> now <laughs> we know that but then they it's like a Scottish guy turns out to be him. So he's one of the ah. people who's like, he's pushing the British and somebody's pushing yeah. the thing and all that. And that's what's so problematic about the whole thing that he's, he, in the beginning, he's anti he's pro concentration camp, but then it turns out his whole problem with the British empire was the fact that they colonized his family's mill. So where do you stand, man? Are you a fucking fascist? Are you are you warmonger? Well, are I guess he to... is. I, I guess he's like the typical he... type of he's just evil. Fascist or evil person, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, in the end they have a yeah, in the end you find find out that yeah, he's the bad guy that he was one of the bad yeah. like it's so strange. And I guess, By yeah. the way, Rasputin and the Jewish uh, charlatan guy who's a real historical figure who uh, advised uh, Hitler early on in his career but then got killed off probably by mm -hmm. Himmler and other people um you know uh, like they, there is a like they have meetings the bad guys the bad deep state yeah. have meetings and then there is Rasputin and this guy mm -hmm. an American mm -hmm. one and then after Rasputin dies after the Rasputin dies, guess who takes his place as the Russian spy Vladimir Lenin Oh, really? <laughs> and and he's like, yeah, you know, you have to continue with the Scottish accent. He's mm -hmm. like, you have to continue the, you know, the work of our other comrade. Yeah. And they all call themselves comrades. And then uh, Vladimir Lenin is like, yes, now our left hand is like, our left hand is strong. Now we have to make our right hand strong as well. And then. Uh, at the end of the, when the movie finishes and the credits roll, after the credits, there is this scene where the Jewish uh, guy, the uh, the German Jewish guy, uh, that was you know yeah. he he introduces Lenin to a new member of their team, and he says, uh, introdu uh, "I introduce our new member of our team," and the new member of our team is Adolf Hitler. <laughs> What? It's uh, yeah, exactly. It's just the idea, like it's such a reactionary way of thinking that yeah, the communists and the fascists are yeah. working in cooperation with each other to undermine the British Empire and the values of liberal democracy. <laughs> and then by the end of the film, by the way, the good guys set up this council that this is a prequel to the Kingsman movies. This is it's a private intelligence agency that is supposed to be above politics and bureaucrats and by the way includes the king the king uh, that's king george i think he becomes part of the council he becomes Percival. and so you it was like the origin story of the deep state i mean uh, the parallels were like yeah. unbelievable because you had the red cross and you know uh, the deep state always uses charities and stuff uh, so it was like the you know they it was part of the Red Cross and charities and all that, and you also had this idea that the American president. I mean, I want to make fun of the idea that the American president is blackmailed through a video, <laughs> but now with the whole Jeff Zucker uh, things coming out and Chris Cuomo apparently cornering people and all this shit coming yeah. out, um, it's probably plausible in some way, you know. So very weird. I mean, the relationship this movie has uh, as with history is the same relationship most people have with the toilet papers in their house. <laughs> but uh, it was just so, it was interesting because it was almost like, yeah, okay, I get, like that's actually what the, most people I think view history as. They mm. think Lenin was, you know, hanging out with Hitler and they were setting up shops. And I mean, these kind of stories, uh, this way are easier to understand, I guess, and to sell as like a big narrative. Yeah, like this big bad guy and that bad guy. But the the deep state part was like really it was really funny because I mean I guess they weren't elected officials 
back then so much. I'm sure there were some. It's only it's it's in the 1900s. It doesn't take place in the 1500s. However, all the plans are exactly kind of being made by these people who are going behind the back. It seems like you know, I mean, of the, the, of the he, government and stuff. I so mean, it's just uh, so these people who are controlling. So yeah, it's kind of showing that the. I mean, I guess it's trying to say like the mean, deep state no... started um, World War One, kind of. <laughs> and it makes the deep uh, state yeah. look bad that but then there's like the good deep state yeah it was yeah there is a counter was, yeah. Um, <laughs> no but it's so weird there is no mention of for example the uh, russian revolution that mm. like lenin just lenin takes over as if uh, no, i think you yeah, have very high expectations for these kind of things i'm not shocked by this storyline whatsoever i mean i have i matthew one was again it's one of my aesthetic i like layer cake i love layer cake i love a stardust I love uh, Kick-Ass. Uh, yeah, but even, those like, movies, like when you bring history in, uh, it's, happen, it's hard. Suddenly you become so sloppy when you're dealing with history and so just, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. Let <laughs> Lenin become a friend with that and that yeah. with that. No, I mean, that that really sounds ridiculous and cartoonish at that point. It, it, I mean, and the, I mean, there is no like, like the Kaiser and Tsar, they make decisions. There's no provisional governments or cabinets or... I mean, even the British one, the king is making like there is no mention of the prime ministers, mm -hmm. uh, you know. All, all. And by the way, by that time in Britain, king was already a figure, not a figure. I mean, to this day, I think to say queen is a figure is an exaggeration mm -hmm. to an extent, but they were already sort of it was a power balance. You know, it wasn't just king going around. I, it's so ridiculous. It was just yeah. wow. It was just ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't no, know. when you take the storyline in that way, it really sounds and, and ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was so weird because you know you had that thing that you know that criticism that usually comes from the left that the World War One was a family war or a tribal war. Yeah. Uh, you know because it was uh, they, everybody was related through Queen Victoria. They were all cousins and stuff. And it was it mentions that criticism, but the response to that criticism is like no we need a good king or yeah I, I, it's, I, it's a very weird movie politically <laughs> very weird no, just yeah and it wasn't bad to watch and and so it, no it's fun to watch i must what say. does the, the first thing is good but and then what does the first opening i guess the opening scene is only related to the rest of the movie based on the characters right because i mean yeah that's just what's going on in south africa there between the english and um, the Dutch and others, I guess, then the movie fast forwards to like 15 years later. So that yeah, opening well, scene is just the... related to the kid and all that, yeah. It's a set, it's setting up the bad guy. It's setting yeah, up true. the I know, and guys, that's, No, I meant historical the guy's connection. Worry. Yeah, no, it, sets, it sets, no, no, it's, I, yeah. yeah, in parts of the evil plot of the bad guy, I don't know how did the Boer War <laughs> really uh, sort of came into yeah. that, but yeah. It was, it, well, yeah, it was really, I mean, I would say Matthew Goody uh, had a lot of fun on the, with the bad guy. Like mm. he did play the bad guy as a genuine like cartoon character. So that was, I mean, it, that's the thing. Whenever it leaned into the cartoonish stuff, I yeah. liked it. But when it tried to have this sort of, you know, oh, our young uh, men died. And then that with the historical stuff, like either be fun. <laughs> or be a serious one like you can't yeah. have it both i mean like, it I categorizes don't. itself as action comedy so it's but then to... too many too many specific references to real like you know real historical figures and real shit like the war war yeah. and the concentration camps it's just, it felt odd to me again i did enjoy the fights uh, i'm not but no, and no, again fights, because yeah, Ma yeah. it was because matthew won i was really disappointed i must say I see, I see. They're interesting. Anything else with this movie? No, but I'm going to yeah, continue about? my cultural adventures for <laughs> next week. Any other movies you have in mind to watch right now? Yes, The Green, Green Knight or The Green Knight. It's a British movie. It's, uh, reviews are fantastic. I've been lazy watch. Like It's a mm. movie that you have to focus a bit. It's, it's based on the legend of The Green Knight. I don't know if you know. It's an Arthurian sort of thing. Uh, it's about uh, one of the knights, I forget which one it is, one of the knights of the round table uh, oh, goes see. to fight a green um, uh, sort of a monster. And it's really interesting. I was reading off, off I love like 
comparative mythology and stuff. And apparently there are studies that say that the Green Knight of the story has parallels in Arabic mythology mm. and Islamic mythology. There is a, a prophet Hazar, which I believe in that in Arabic means prophet like the green prophet or something like that. They are very similar things. So, and reviews are fantastic. I'm really looking forward to that. So, but it's going to be a hard, it's one of those movies you have to sit down and it's not like the King's Man is just perfect if you want to spend yeah. two hours just having fun. <laughs> the Rasputin scenes are as a like cartoonish stuff, so much fun. Yeah. The, you know, it's just energetic, original action, not your usual, you know, shitty. Yeah. Yeah. Even the war scenes, the machine gun, Maxine machine gun scenes were crazy, man. The <laughs> it was so... No, in that sense, it was pretty good. But yeah. all right, very nice. Um, any final words to today's podcast? Uh, no, but very mixed feelings. And don't take anything I say seriously, like <laughs> satire. Oh, and oh, I wanted to thank you, by the way. I never do that. But yeah, you. I realized recently doing a bit of our sub stack and stuff it's so difficult editing and uploading and all that and you do all of that yeah. so thank you i guess it's all right it takes a little bit of time but sometimes actually what i like about it is that at times you don't need brain power to do it so i think that I helps me to get it yeah you can um, listen to something to get it done or, or even do it when like i'm tired or towards nighttime well man I get to- except for the headlines and thinking of a picture that's the only time where like you know you have to brain power no no, no. I, 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 but i you have a lot more patience like whenever there is a slight glitch or the upload is like that mm. or the picture doesn't fit the frame i get so <laughs> like i am so technologically like pissed off like I mean, <laughs> like you know so yeah. I, I, yeah thanks for that like yeah no generous. worries all right okay well thank you for watching please leave your comments questions criticisms down below i will make sure to get to them If not, we'll see you in our next video. Thank you.